Well, good morning from the uh, REMAX Center, home of the St. John's Curling Club, Sunday morning for the semifinal for the men's provincial championship. We have uh, quite a game, I'm sure, in store here for us this morning, and glad you could join us. With me, this, I'm Jeff Cunningham, and uh, covering today's game, and with me is Andrew Manuel. So, Andrew, uh, what are your thoughts on, obviously, is what's going to be, I'm sure, an excellent game. Oh, we got two powerhouse teams here, Jake, uh, with uh, Team Simmons and uh, team, uh, team McNeil Lambswood. Uh, I think we're going to call uh, uh, by the shortened version, Lammy. Lammy sounds good to me. As he's known around the club here. Uh, yeah, these teams, I know uh, uh, last night was a spectacular game between uh, Team Simmons and Team Young. I believe it was a, a triple takeout in the uh, with, with a partially buried stone. Uh, for Simmons to go on and succeed in that game. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, after coming off a late game like that last night, uh, Jake, what are your thoughts on uh, how Team Simmons would be feeling here this morning? Well, just looking at the first uh, Rocks called, he's obviously feeling pretty good. He called the center guard right away, uh, which was the same uh, as he did against uh, Nathan Young yesterday afternoon. So... They're obviously feeling confident, that's yeah. what I would say. So, yeah, usually uh, uh, most times teams will come out and uh, put it in in the first end, just kind of get, yeah. get the ice uh, beaten down and so on. But uh, these guys are coming ready to play, obviously. And, uh, yeah, getting that center line guard up and then uh, that wraparound, uh, we're, we got some action going here right in the very first end. Yeah, Alex Smith uh, not showing his age on those two shots, is he? <laughs> well, it's funny. We're allowed to pick on Alex because he's, he's a senior curler as well as we are so. we are yeah <laughs> and last night at the break uh you know andrew has a, tr a tradition to go out at uh, halftime for a little bit of fresh air yes we'll call it and uh and then uh steven uh, had a bathroom break and alex was coming out of said, alex uh what's on the go we going for a little more voltaire are you <laughs> <laughs> hey anyway, alex has been playing great so uh I'm sure that'll continue. Yeah. And you know what, for us senior guys, you know, we, uh, often don't get the call, but now and then now, and, uh, uh, now and again we do. And, uh, it makes for a pretty exciting week, uh, when you get out there. Cause that's, uh, you know, competitive, uh, blood starts flowing and, uh, Alex, you know what, he was a, a, an integral, uh, part of this, this squad the week and, uh, you know, bringing his uh, knowledge to the game and, uh, his experience, I'm sure has been a real asset for, uh, for team Simmons. I know actually I was talking to Keith, uh, Jura last night and, uh, you know, Keith had a, an unfortunate injury uh, early, very early in the season, first spiel of the year, and uh, which sidelined him uh, for the season. And, uh, you know, it's tough on a team when you've, you've built chemistry over the years. Yeah. And I know Andrew and Keith have been playing together for quite a while. And, uh, you know, when that occurs, trying to kind of make things work through the season. And I know most of the season, Andrew had been curling with three. Uh, so to get Alex in there and making sure the chemistry is right, it's, uh, it's a bit of a gamble sometimes. But obviously yeah. the chemistry is working. Yes, sir, yeah. sure is. So uh, Team Lammy, they went a little deep on uh, coming around the blue blue rocks, went back eight foot. Uh, so now it's uh, a cleanup time. I guess they tried to run the front. And uh, they have hammer. Yeah. So we got a freeze attempt here going by Team Simmons to try and really posture and, and – uh, get themselves in uh, hopefully position for a steal is, uh, is their uh, plan, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, I think the next shot you're probably going to see that uh, yellow being run in or yeah. uh, a direct shot at uh, trying to move those blues uh, with a with a, a nose hit. I think yellow shot there on the back, back four. Yeah. Uh, Good-looking shot coming here by uh, Stephen Trickett. Yeah, very nice stone. <laughs> Looks like the double yeah. opportunities there, straight up. Yeah, so I think a little off nose on the broom side would uh, would do it for sure. And then we see. A total a switch of momentum in the end, Jake, if, if yeah, the shot is one, made. one stone. Line looks good. And a great shot. So 
So Team Lammy line two, uh, but they are wide open and uh, gives uh, an opportunity for a double takeout here as well, or they could hit and roll under the guard. Absolutely, I think uh, might be a another shot at a double here. Looks like about a normal weight hit. Heavy sweep. And that's a well-played shot. Uh, I don't know. No, it's not shot rock, but uh, certainly buried. And uh, the key thing here is that it's uh, top tee, Jake. So uh, it certainly gives them a... Uh, a bit of an advantage that way because that uh, sh the shot rock is actually back tee, so there's a yeah, couple exactly. of shot options here for Team Simmons to uh, try and, and uh, bring that steal back in play. So a little short run back being played. Some great shot making here this morning, Jake. That's another beauty. Yeah, you usually uh, see this kind of stuff in, in the third or fourth ends before they start attempting those difficult stones, but they're right at it this morning. Yeah, so here we are, you know, uh, the, it might be the same outcome that would have been if, <laughs> yeah. if that first uh, uh, that first draw by Alex was uh, was played to the house. But uh, you know what, it gets, uh, again, it gets these teams fueled and uh, getting that adrenaline uh, going. And uh, mm. yeah, we've seen some great shots and, and uh, some posturing here, perhaps. Certainly came to play, didn't they? They sure did. Okay. So with that rollout now, you got an opportunity. Uh, Team Lammy can come around that corner guard, and that's what he's indicated. So if we talk about it a lot, like the uh, all the great shots that are made, but sometimes the the, the shots with the mo the biggest consequence are simple open shots, and quite often, just uh, rolling out in that case for Colin Thomas. Gave the opportunity to go around the corner guard. Absolutely, and, and I, you simple know, open takeout. I said, so one of the hardest shots is just to draw rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this one looks to be tracking a little bit. Uh, no, we're getting some late curl here. I don't know if they're going to fully bury the stone. It was probably, what do you think, Jake, uh, a third to a half open? Looks like about a half. Yeah. So this is the first of uh, Andrew's two shots, and uh, looks like he uh, he's really taken a liking to these uh, kind of a lightweight, uh, probably boardish type of, type of hit. And uh, I know he can certainly throw the high heat, but mm. uh, he, uh, he's been playing a lot of these shots over the course of the week. And... Uh, uh, so obviously the goal here for him, he'd like to, to hit and roll away. Uh, so that way it would, uh, make it more difficult for, uh, team Lambie to, uh, make that roll. Right. Yeah. So Unless he can cur carve it right around the guard and then, uh, may, you know, stay buried himself. Anyway, the boys are working this hard. Wow. Great brush. Great brush. Just skinny the guard. Well, that's good though. He's got, uh, you know, he didn't roll towards the center, so there's, uh, it's, there's, there's no opportunity for Team Lammy to roll under the guard. And I don't think he could have made that shot any better. So I don't know if that uh, actually playing that weight uh, yeah. for the roll behind cover is actually there, Jake. No, I don't think so. So we'll keep the uh, viewers updated as well, because on the women's side, we've got um, Team Curtis uh, playing Team Boland in a, uh, a rematch, actually, from last night's action. And uh, so this is a, a tie break uh, to see who will uh, pro uh, progress to the, uh, to the final against Team Goslin later this afternoon. We got a hard curve going on here, Jake. Yeah. 
And looks like that stone yeah. is going to hang on, is it? Yeah. No, we got to roll out. Roll, rolling out. So I'm sure you're going to see Andrew call the come around that guard now. So again, he's he's considering the other turn. Again, it speaks to the importance of that uh, of having that rollout, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It just gives the opportunity for the opposition to have a freebie. Yeah. I don't know if that's would that split be there, uh, Jake? The the blue rock. Tough. I know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I would say no, I guess. But certainly it's something you'd try if you really needed to do, say, to, to uh, tie a game. Sure, sure. And, you know, they've yeah, seen this, this, this throw uh, probably, what, uh, oh, yeah. four times now. So they usually will go with what you know versus trying to take a new path. Yeah. And Simmons' objective here is to draw around the center guard, the corner guard and force Team Lammy into one. And uh, Simmons would have last rock in the second end. We got a real heavy sweep here by the, the front end of Team Simmons, trying to get that rock to the to the rings. I think we're just shy of the rings there, Jake. So uh, not the intended outcome there. So this will just be a throw through for uh, Team Lammy and they'll uh, rack them up and, and uh, go into the second. Anyway, it's a good warm up end. We're warmed up. They're warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Apologize to the viewers for nine o'clock game, but at least people at home are sitting back in their couch or whatever, having if their we, coffee. If we can make our way down to the club, yeah. Jake, then they can roll over and turn on the TV and have a look. TV, yeah. <laughs> anyway, glad you guys could join us for uh, for an exciting day of curling. So that's it. It's a blank in the first end, and uh, Team Lammy takes hammer into the second. We'll be back in 30 seconds. So, Welcome back. So, uh, yeah, replay of the first end, uh, Andrew, with uh, a guard up front by Alex Smith, and now he's coming around. I think uh, the only difference in this particular end is that we got the corner guard up now uh, by uh, Team Lammy. <laughs> so, 
So a little bit about the uh, about Team Lammy, uh, Jake. We were just talking with uh, Ryan's father here, who's uh, who's in from Stephenville to watch a bit of action mm -hmm. and so, and support his uh, his son through this uh, through the tournament. And uh, Graham Weagle, I think, is uh, the second on the team, I believe. Yes. So uh, he's a uh, curler out of uh, Chester, Nova Scotia, and uh, his. Uh, quite accomplished himself because I uh, understand uh, from Ryan's dad that uh, he curled the Nova Scotia team to a junior championship. So In the under 18s, yeah. Under 18s, yeah. And uh, I do recall him playing with, I believe it was Team Purcell, uh, who had played in the Ballyhaley cash spiel there a couple of years ago. So uh, that would have been, I guess, our first look uh, locally at this particular player. And uh, yeah, he's he's been with this team now, uh, connected for a, a couple of years now. And um, so, yeah, we, we see more and more of, of teams now looking outside the province for some additional talent. And uh, I know Team Smith, uh, Greg Smith, they have a, a player that's from, I believe, from Calgary or, or Alberta. Mm -hmm. uh, I may be mistaken on that, but I know he's from out west there. And uh, Team Skane's also, uh, also with uh, Matt Blanford uh, coming in as well. And I may be missing uh, another player, but that's, that's the ones that come to mind. So we saw Team Lammy trying to take advantage of their corner guard uh, and just rubbed as they were coming by. So now uh, Simmons laying two. But yeah, Andrew, I guess the Canadian, Curling Canada made the adjustment to the eligibility rules. I mean, um, for all our curling lifetimes, everyone had to be a member of the same club and, and resident of the same province. But uh, now they've allowed for us uh, one import. So one individual can join your team from anywhere in the country. I think is there for the not, provincial championship. Is there not another proposal coming where uh, if you have birthright, so uh, regardless of where you live, uh, if you're a Newfoundland resident right. and you're living anywhere else in Canada, you would still be eligible and not be considered an import. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if that change has occurred yet or not, but no, that's been uh, certainly been proposed. And I think the uh, if you won a championship for the province you can continue to compete for that province so brett gallant for example uh, he's won a new a canadian a newfoundland championship uh, while he was living here so yeah. that gives him uh, a, a lifetime pass wow i, I, I hadn't heard that yeah that's interesting <laughs> i believe that's kind of like anyway kind of like winning a green jacket isn't it <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep going with these rules so we're completely wrong so we probably should give up now <laughs> Nice, uh, nice roll there by Stephen Trickett. Beauty hit and roll. So we can see uh, the run back is now the next uh, shot attempt by uh, Team Lammy. So in the ladies game, Andrew uh, blank in in the first, so uh, they're playing the second in as well. We got an on off sweep here. And just made that shot, that run back uh, to grab enough of that stone in order to uh, make that uh, that double. And uh, Jake, you know, you see some pretty high heat coming here from these teams and that's uh, that's a, a, a part of their arsenal that uh, you don't need to catch much of that back rock in order to make it move and make it move out of the house. So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's imp impressive uh, shot making for sure. Yeah, it's a prerequisite to be a high level team now to be able to throw very hard, fast hits in those situations. So we we're speaking earlier about having uh, Alex Smith join the team, uh, Team Simmons, uh, as a senior curler. And uh, we actually have another senior curler uh, that's in the wings there for Team Simmons, and that's uh, my teammate, Dave Naftal. So Dave has been uh, called in as, as fifth player uh, for the Simmons crew. And uh, I know that was uh, done in, uh, I guess, the possibility of, of Colin having his third child. Cause, uh, oh, Okay. Uh, Fallon, uh, Colin's wife, uh, she's yeah. expecting, and uh, I believe within the next uh, two weeks, I think they're uh, ex expecting that to have that that third child into the world. So uh, 
yeah, I mean, it's exciting times in the in the Thomas household, and uh, certainly going to get uh, much much busier for yeah. Colin and Fallon because now they're going to be outnumbered. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Wow, what a shot. Rocks go flying everywhere. Yeah. But there's still that lonely blue on the back of the button. And I'm sure Simmons is going to put a short guard on that. So it could be one of these games, Jake, where we're seeing. Uh, and, of course, I'm wrong. He's yeah. going to call an open draw to the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just testing everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is the best opportunity to, to force for the single, but. Uh, yeah, if you can even those up and, and make the double um, either not an option or, or much more difficult, uh, then you'll just see the the exchange of hits back and forth in order for Team Lamby to have a, an opportunity at, at the double at some point. So if I was to put a short guard up there, would you freeze the what, rock on the button if you were if you were Lamby? I not not at the mate's first stone. No, no. no. I I think perhaps the skip's uh, first shot might be. Uh, might be an attempt, but uh, yeah, I think for the mate's last stone, I'd, I'd play that run back because it is a yeah. short run back, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was my thinking to go with the guard. Doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just different uh, philosophies. Uh, and uh, just like chess, there's not always the, <laughs> the moves are all different, but they can all have a, a different strategy. I think the, sh the shot there by Team Simmons was an attempt to, to split the rings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that one came up a little bit short. Yeah, because if uh, Team McNeil Lambswood now, if they make their uh, hit and roll, then uh, that's going to put the pressure on Team Simmons. Yeah, and I'm not sure I buy into forcing uh, Team Lammy to one in the even ends <laughs> if, if you can avoid it. Right? True. But there you go. As I said, this is it's it's a debate. You can uh, we could have a grand chat about strategy all night. And then there's strategy and then there's actual shot making. And so, you yeah, get back up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have often talk about tolerance and curling. And uh, that's one thing, you know, we, we speak a lot about with uh, junior curlers is understanding you got the shot, but you also got the uh, potential outcome of what else can happen. Yes. Exactly. And which we, we talk about is tolerance in the, in the curling world. And uh, so you often got to strategize and make sure, okay, well, this is our shot. And uh, what else is a good outcome if, if we don't make the actual shot? So yeah. trying to make something that, uh, good out of a, uh, you know, a mediocre. Yeah, plan ahead for what could happen and, and what your alternate mm -hmm. can be. So Team Lammy didn't get any role there. So uh, Simmons has a chance to uh, to play that hit and roll himself around the corner guard that they put up. So again, uh, an easy weight hit uh, being called here by Team Simmons. And, uh, you know, that, that's the other thing about, uh, curling too, Jake is, is having that, uh, that touch cause that easier weight hit, um, gives you a better guarantee or, you know, I shouldn't say guarantee, but a better likelihood that that rock that you're uh, using as a takeout is going to stick around that, yeah. that shooter, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we talk about weights like normal. We talk about control, hack, board, and hopefully the viewers have a level of understanding of that but certainly anything that's control or hack is fairly lightweight um you know the rock goes through the house but uh not briskly and i know watching uh you know the u18 u16 uh they're almost like squirrels in a way because it's uh, it's either a takeout which is hard or a draw and <laughs> yeah, nothing in between, nothing in between. <laughs> yeah. yeah well the young, young kids love to fire it right mm. And are we going to get the roll here, Jake? No. Yeah. So we got a slight roll, but not near uh, what was uh, hoped. Uh, so that stone is fully opened. So I don't know if you've peeked over at the uh, women's uh, tie break there, Jake. Uh, I know I see that uh, Stacy Curtis has uh, got her last rock here. Um, can you uh, do you have a bird's eye of that house to see if there's uh, anything happening on that sheet? 
Yeah, it looked like she's playing a hit against uh, two in the forefoot. The two are lined up pretty reasonably for a double. Oh, we got a nice roll here by Team Simmons, and that rock is Perfect. fully buried. Yeah. So Team Lammy forced to uh, to their one. The boys would have the alternative of trying that uh, run back uh, takeout for the blank, but uh, you know, obviously, we talked about scoring yeah. and even ends. So, uh, yeah, the the obvious shot here uh, at this stage would be to to take their point. Sure, and that uh, keep control of the game. So, I think uh, you know. It's important for us to put a shout out to the volunteers, uh, Jake. I know um, I've seen a, a number of people uh, down at the uh, the rink here uh, all week. We've got timers. I think there would be timers on each sheet, so as many as uh, six timers, actually five, because I don't think sheet one was in play at all this week. Uh, but uh, so we have individuals down there making sure that uh, pace of play is uh, is kept going, and uh, as well as. Um, you know, we got our commentators here, and we got our technical folks. So, uh, you know, it takes a community to run these events. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, a big thank you to everybody who stepped up this week to uh, volunteer and uh, to make this uh, event a, a, a top-class event. Yeah. Well, surprising uh, result there. Uh, Team Lammy came up uh, short on their draw. So Simmons uh, stole one. It's a big, uh, big turnover there. So uh, Lammy takes the hammer again into the uh, third end, and uh, we'll be back to join you in 30 seconds. Offs and sniffs. Welcome back, everybody, uh, for the third end of this uh, men's semifinal for 2024 Provincial Curling Championship. And uh, while we were away there, uh, Stacy uh, Curtis, she made her uh, a shot against uh, two. Uh, Sarah Bolden was line two, uh, very close to a center guard, and Stacy had one option, was a double takeout for one, and she made it. So so uh, Curtis is up one after two. And, of course, in our game, as we saw, a steal, a big steal, uh, albeit only one, but uh, effectively uh, Team Lammy lost the hammer that they enjoyed uh, to start this game. So lots of curling left yet, Andrew, but uh, certainly a big victory and one end for, uh, for Simmons. Yeah, taking that single point in the, uh, I know it's only early, 10 in game, so, uh, you know, there's lots of opportunity for blanks and so on to move that hammer back and forth. But, uh, you know, obviously teams, uh, at some point, they want to get the hammer in the even ends. So uh, we'll see that, uh, you know, uh, attempt to try and uh, move that hammer back and forth. So uh, Team Lambie, of course, uh, as you mentioned, Jake, now with hammer in, in odd ends. So, uh, 
Uh, I'm sure they're going to push hard for their score of a deuce here to try and uh, get back on top. Yeah, so Alex Smith sets things up again with the center guard and a come around. And a little bounce on that freeze attempt. And now that rock is uh, a little bit open on the other side, but a yeah. little more buried. Yeah, I'm right on the, on the T line. Yeah. So for Team Simmons, you've got uh, Alex Smith, as we've talked about. He's subbing in at lead. And Alec actually holds the broom for uh, Simmons when he throws. Uh, Stephen Trickett, uh, Colin Thomas, and, of course, Skipper Andrew Simmons. I think of that squad, uh, Jake, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe all uh, hands have been at uh, at the Briar with the exception of Colin. And uh, as we know, Colin is the son of uh, accomplished and acclaimed Jeff Thomas. And uh, so this is a huge, uh, would be a huge uh, opportunity for Colin to uh, to finally get to the big dance if, if they can get there. But yes. uh, certainly they got uh, two teams to try and get through here, that being uh, McNeil Lambswood and then... Uh, uh, we got Greg Smith uh, in in the final as well, so uh, it's it's a, certainly a long, still a long road for these teams. And uh, but you know, right now the the mission certainly is uh, is to win uh, for both of these teams to win this one to get that the opportunity to play uh, Greg at uh, I think is it two o'clock or two thirty this afternoon. The game is at two thirty. Two thirty, yeah. So there won't be, you know, there won't be much of a turnaround, uh, you know, break no. in between for these teams. They'll probably finish up here uh, probably just before noon. And then, uh, you know, they got about uh, really only an hour and a half of rest because they're, yeah. they're usually down to the club about an hour before game time uh, to get prepped and uh, get loose and limber. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a long day, for, uh, certainly for one of these yeah. two teams. So we got Team Simmons now sitting two in the in the four foot and uh, one well one in button really, and uh, so I don't know if this is a, a a guard attempt here now. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tight guard. Sweepers on it to hold the line, I believe. Yeah, it looked uh, that one looked a little tight uh, out of uh, Stevens' hand, and uh, so actually, you know, the, the, where that rock is positioned is is not terrible. In that uh, where those rocks are angled, uh, coming around that guard to try and, and uh, play any sort of takeout, uh, you would likely get a jam. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we can see Mc, McNeil Amswood here now. Uh, they might be playing a little little tap type or. Uh, uh, they might even go for the for the hit. We'll see now. What yeah, they, they go over the hit and, and just stick it there. Stick it on top of the button. Yeah, they can see about two thirds of a rock from my vantage point. Very makeable shot for sure. Probably throwing around hack weight, hack the board. So the line looks good here, Jake. Trying to carve that in there. And if that rock sticks around, that's uh, that's a decent shot. Still wide open. They would have uh, team McNeil would would have preferred if that uh, yellow stayed under cover. Uh, it is open there, uh, and now we still got a, a blue rock that's partially covered. Um, so we might see a stacking. Yeah. So now it's decision time here uh, for Team yeah. Simmons, whether or not they remove that yellow or if they uh, try and force the play uh, in the in the forefoot and uh, put uh, some additional pressure on uh, McNeil Lambswood here. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't uh, hesitate here. This draw is the shot, in my opinion. And that looks like what Andrew was called. Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's too, it's, you know, if you if you hit the rock, the yellow stone, it's, it's just a wide open draw a tap for uh, Team Lammy to come around that, that blue guard, which they're going to do. They're going to do that, whatever Andrew does with the other rock. Yes. Yeah. 
this rock looks to be out there too, Jake. I'm not sure if it's, uh, they're stepping away from it. So there's, uh, they're just going to let it come to rest wherever it uh, ends up. Trying to make a curl at the end. That's wide open. So you could nose this one, make the double, and then sit two. Yeah. Yeah, so big opportunity for Team Lammy here. Um, seize the opportunity. This is a big shot, big uh, big turnover here, potential. Got a heavy sweep here, Jake. Trying to get by that blue guard. So the double was not made. However, we still have we have two yellow lurking in the house now, and yeah. uh, that lonely blue. Uh, so it, again, it'll be interesting to see what Andrew chooses here because he could play a uh, a hit on that yellow that's in the, the two o'clock position. Uh, you could actually get a hit. Maybe, I don't know if you get the double in the roll, but uh, you certainly could remove that yellow and, and uh, get a roll under that center guard uh, to kind of yeah. make the same type of shot he was attempting the last time, just a different way to get there. Yeah. yeah and that, well, that rock is, is totally open there and available for the hit. <laughs> so Colin Thomas with his second stone for the end. And that's a beauty made nice there by stone. Colin. Nice stone. So sitting one, two. And uh, so we'll see now uh, McNeil Lansford has indicated he's going to go after that stone now in the uh, in the forefoot. Uh, looks like it's going to be a freeze attempt. So uh, another way to try and craft up a, a score of a deuce here. So Daniel Bruce with the freeze tap attempt. Obviously the weight's good. They're just trying to wait for the rock to curl. And Andrew try to get some separation there to make that uh, play on the yellow a little easier. It's a nice shot. The rock is a little over half buried. The Yellowstone and now their shot rock. Team Lammy shot rock. So with an easy weight hit here, if, if Andrew elects to, to take it on, uh, easy weight hit to a roll to the open side, uh, allowing or having uh, Team Simmons sit three, uh, certainly would, would put a little bit of pressure on uh, uh, Team McNeil Lambswood. Yeah. Um, very difficult then to try and craft up a two, but because uh, that guard is pretty high. And uh, I think with anything uh, you try to attempt to, to bury it around that, mm -hmm. it would still be accessible uh, with... Uh, you know, a, a hack weight type of hit. Yeah. The other shot you might see McNeil Lance would take on would be a freeze to that back blue. If, uh, if this hit and roll doesn't stick around for, uh, to out count that back one, uh, then, uh, that could be a, a shot attempt for, for McNeil Lambswood. Oh, great shot. Nice throw, yep. Yeah, that back one didn't miss the jam yeah. by much, no. but uh, shot made. Just missed it. So can he get the hit and roll behind the guard and be shot? I guess he can, yes. He can. And I assume that's what he's playing. No real benefit to pay, play the double here now, Andrew. No, I mean, because uh, that's where you have that other blue in the house that's out counting the one, the yellow that's nibbling. Yeah. Um, there's not much, uh, no need really to play, take on that uh, double. Uh, obviously, uh, you can make that hit and roll would be the, the best outcome for Team uh, Lammy right now. 
So we got a signal from the front end that this rock might be a bit heavy. And looks like a nose hit his Jake. Yes, right on the nose. So that's wide open. Simmons gets to replicate the same throw, basically. This time he'd like to roll. He would like to roll because that for, it would force likely force the draw. And uh, so you have to, as, as a, a, a skip uh, and shot uh, planning, um, obviously, you know, having McNeil Lands would miss the draw in the previous end. I'm sure that's going through Andrew's mind that he'd like to force that same yes. shot again from his opposing skip. So he really doesn't even need to bury all this. If he can roll even half under, you know, that, that would further – blocks the path to the forefoot, you know? Yeah, so I, I think even a nose hit here yeah. would be uh, would be a good outcome. Yeah, nose would be good too, yeah. yeah. You'd force him to draw the intern there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fresh ice. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so boys are on it. Heavy sweep. And called off. Yeah, they're going for the roll. And beauty shot. But Andrew, you made a good point. You know, uh, yes, nice roll, but it it left the same draw path, and now there's uh, the, the rock on the back of the eight foot is actually a bit of backing for uh, for Lammy. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, absolutely, Jake. I and think I, I he don't come to the back of that and still be shot. Yeah, I believe so. I think there's enough room yeah. there. Uh, Whereas you play the nose hit as you suggested, yeah. forces him to the intern, which the ice he hasn't thrown on. Um, much more difficult shot. Yeah, absolutely. And with that role, like that intern would even be a, a consideration right now. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, that uh, having that back blue there yeah. as as a uh, a catcher would be a uh, uh, makes it a better you know in in the mind of a skip. It just um, makes the shot feel a little easier. So yeah. anyway, big shot here, Team Lammy. They're just trying to put it in the red. We got a heavy Four sweep foot. by the by the front end here. The weight looks pretty good. See the boys all Off. waving. He must be good. And here settles nicely into the forefoot. Great shot by Ryan. Yeah, bit of pressure. So there you have it. After two ends of play, uh, we're tied at one into the fourth. And we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, we're in fourth end of play for this uh, semifinal. And uh, Andrew Simmons has hammer in the fourth, game all tied. A uh, little update from the ladies' side. So we, we're calling it a tiebreaker, but you could also call it a semifinal. Absolutely. Sounds even better, doesn't it? Yeah. Because uh, the winner advances to the, to the final. Um, 
So uh, Stacy uh, Curtis has stolen another point, so she's up two zip after three, and they're playing the fourth end, of course, with uh, Sarah Bolden uh, having hammer. And back on our sheet, we're uh, we're in the same mode with the uh, center guards going up. Well, guards going up. I don't think it was meant to be a center. And now uh, Team Lammy trying the, to draw around that long uh, center guard. And just speaking, Jake, a little bit of the psychology end of the game. Uh, for the women's uh, play today, you had uh, Team Boland uh, play Stacy Curtis last night, and Stacy had a fairly, uh, you know, uh, one-sided win, really, right? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, she dominated in that uh, round robin. How do you think that plays into, uh, you know, what's going through Team Boland's, uh, their minds today in this game? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, clearly they, uh, you know, a couple of big, you know, there was probably a couple of uh, misses that were key to the to the large scores. But, uh, you know, they, they, they also uh, beat them. The Bolden won the first round game as well. So, um, or she, so they're split one and one. And I think that's what they would have taken to their discussions last night. Look, you know, we're one and one against this team. And uh, so this today is anyone's game. Yeah, so just come out with yeah. a, the bl blank slate, so to speak, yeah. and say, you know what, we're we're ready, and you take it uh, as we always say, one game at a time. Yeah. And uh, I'd be more concerned about uh, Team Curtis and a bit of complacency, having won such a, you know, uh, a, a large uh, score by a large score. You know, the thinking that well, you know, we got this in the bag. Yes, that, that's these, a great you know, point. These, yeah. these are two great teams, and they're you know, I'm I'm sure they'll. Uh, well, they're settled in now to a you know a fairly tight game. It's only two two uh, two points in a difference, so there's a lot of curling left yet. Absolutely. So we just saw a uh, rub on the guard there uh, by uh, Alex, uh, uncharacteristic miss actually, because yeah. uh, Alex has been curling pretty solid all week, yeah. and uh, so yeah, that uh, certainly will uh, cause a little bit of a momentum uh, uh, gain by Team uh, McNeil Lambswood. So are they drawing around again, or tapping the back, tapping back the yellow one? I would think it looks like they're, it's pretty it's tight ice guard. here. Yeah, it's a long yeah. guard, so we could certainly come around and do a little tap. It could be a little easy split, maybe, Jake? We'll call it a tap dance. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a little tap <laughs> dance on that yellow. <laughs> looks pretty close. It's got nice weight. Real good. And they got some nice separation of those stones. Yeah. Uh, so now it is that back yellow was poked out into the open. Um, interesting. Now we talked about trying to control that top uh, half of the house and uh, Andrew's ignoring that stone that's in the, uh, the forefoot and he's elected to go after the uh, stone that's in the, in the 12. So for him here, uh, he's hoping to get that roll behind the, the corner guard and yes. uh, maybe even tap those yellows uh, more to the back of the house. We'll see now. So Stephen Trickett here with his first shot of the end. I got the hit. No. Oh, just missed that backstone. So uh, you might see uh, McNeil Lanswood now. They they could revert right back into some defense now and and uh, guard this up, but. Uh, yeah. So I think he's thinking hit, but uh, I tell you, there's not a lot of room for error there. No, that, I mean, that, you, that's, you, uh, you know, he could easily jam that blue onto the yellow. And we saw Team Simmons just miss yeah. that back uh, back yellow uh, for the, the attempt at, yeah. at uh, jamming it on there. But uh, and he, and that's what we're talking about here now, saying, you know, we got to watch the thing doesn't jam. <laughs> And the other thing, if you hit that uh, rock, that blue rock on the nose, I, I'm, it's questionable whether or not your uh, your shooter will even be counting because it looks yeah. as though that uh, that blue might not be fully it's fully into the twelve foot. Yes. Anyway, we're going to take it on testy shot. So the line looks good on this one, Jake. Heavy sweep nice now. Lightweight. And we got Ooh. a tick off the front. Mm. 
Well, so interestingly, uh, that back yellow now, again, a long guard, but that might be fully buried. No, it's it's actually, no, no it is exposed. It's yeah, yeah, it's exposed. So, yeah, there's a hit for three here now. So there's lots of options here for uh, Team Simmons. I mean, you got those, uh, we got corners on both sides. Uh, that uh, blue gar blue uh, rock at the top, that's a sneaky uh, rock too because uh, there's, there's several options to that one, straight tap or a split to uh, yeah. put, you know, a couple of rocks under cover. So playing the hit and uh, I'm guessing trying for a roll. No, and hit. Okay. Nice shot. So that's uh, that's wide open, and uh, Team Lammy would love to get a hit and roll. The other option is to play on the front and, and play the double. Yeah, that would be uh, that might be the better shot, actually, mm -hmm. Jay. Because uh, as we talked about trying to control the top of the yeah. house, uh, yeah. that would certainly put them in uh, and yeah. and take away that what I termed a, yeah. a sneaky rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, Linda Moore coined the phrase the "control zone." Having a rock right on the front like that is in the, the control zone, and uh, I love having stones in that spot. Here we go. So a double. Well, we had a sudden move on that rock. I don't know if it picked something, but uh, that rock yeah, was coming like in, and all of a sudden it uh, made a little move. Based yeah. on the reaction, yeah, something strange happened there. I'm always amazed, Andrew. You know, we're playing on ice, and any, any kind of debris at all can affect that stone and how – few times really it does get affected is amazing yeah and know. it doesn't take much it doesn't I mean, take much a little bit of lint and you or think about uh, we're all walking on it and the brooms yeah. and your clothing I yeah mean, it's just i know harold our ice maker he uh he's always harping on about old grippers yeah and uh he thinks every now you know you, sometimes you wonder if it's not promote self-promotion because he does sell equipment as well yeah. so <laughs> you gotta kind of take it with a grain of salt <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, these eccentric ice makers. By yeah. But the other, you know, Jake, uh, we talk about, you know, with the footwear too. And uh, one thing we were talking about last night is uh, when you modify uh, running shoes. And uh, so you got to, because the these, these soles of some of these shoes can be somewhat thin. And uh, so the heat from your foot can actually leave a footprint into the ice. So Yeah, little smudges. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, uh, you know, some of the obstacles sometimes that the team's got to navigate here with spots that may become flat or uh, certainly the slide path is always that one that breaks down quicker, but we shouldn't be seeing that at this point in the game, but certainly, uh, you know, in the seventh, eighth end and onwards, uh, that becomes a factor. <clears throat> Colin Thomas there made the hit and roll, so they're line three. So Lammy wants to hit here now and roll somewhere under cover. So every shot now is getting more and more uh, critical for uh, Team Lammy because uh, with uh, Team Simmons now sitting three in the house, they really got to make a shot here to try and get uh, get undercover and uh, give them some chance of get, getting out of this end. Well, that's a nice stone. Um, looks like they've rolled into the open space, but you know at least it's uh, in front of the blue there, so there's a potential for the jam. Yeah. And being a, a, a back house uh, rock, uh, that would give them at some point, when if Andrew makes a play on this one and, and noses it, we'll say, uh, there is that chance of throwing a freeze uh, in order yeah. for Team McNeil Lanswood to get out of this end as well. So Colin Thomas's last rock at the end. Again, Simmons, Team Simmons has last rock, has hammer. And shooting delay three. So we got an early had an early sweep on off. So it's got to be a, close to being a dead on line. 
and a beauty shot made to navigate that port and also not for, for that uh, yellow rock did not make contact with the back blue so team simmons is still uh, in a situation of sitting three so again decision time here for mcneil answerwood whether or not he decides to play a hit uh the benefit of of that shot option is you can catch that back blue and eliminate two blue. Uh, the other option would have been to uh, to play that freeze as we discussed uh, uh, just a moment ago, uh, in order to really uh, you know try and get out of this end with uh, well ultimately it could end up uh, being a, a force right so, uh, but the uh, attempt is a, a double here. Yeah, you certainly don't want to give up a three. No, that would be well. I wouldn't say a killer, but it would. Yeah, it would certainly uh, put uh, the advantage uh, firmly in in the in the Simmons court. We'd class as a downer, not a killer. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've always said to the, the skips I've played with, uh, Jake, that uh, if you're ever going to give up a three in a 10 end game, do it early. Do it early. <laughs> yeah, get it out of the way early. So they're, yeah, that was quiet weight. I, quiet weight, I guess. Yeah. Trying to the get the roll, I think. I guess right? the roll was all, yeah. yeah. All right. So I think that rock is a little more buried than uh, the previous uh, uh, takeout attempt. Yeah, so Andrew may be forced to just hit that and roll away. I think the option of a of a hack weight is uh, is still there, Jake, and because uh, I think the previous plays were more of a board uh, type of hit. So, with a little less weight, you can certainly uh, I think carve that rock in and uh, get it past that back blue and avoid the the jam. Yeah, that Yellowstone is uh, what we call edge on edge. So the edge of the yellow is is, is uh, just on the side of the guard there up front. So it, it's fully available, but not a whole lot of extra space to, to work with. Yeah, because I think if they actually end up jamming that back blue, it's going to outcount the uh, the blue that's there at about the 10 o'clock position. Yeah. So it is a pretty critical shot here to try to get that yellow past that uh, back blue. So yeah. to stay in, in the situation of sitting three. So Andrew just had a little bit of an extra long look at the uh, at the shot that's before him. I don't know if there's any uh, thought about uh, changing the call, but uh, he's staying with the original shot, and it could be just a discussion of uh, of how that rock's gonna uh, gonna curl with his front end. So it's uh, looks to be more of a board up type of hit of, of hit attempt. Strong sweep, just got that rock by. What a beautiful Great shot. Money. Yeah, no, it's dandy. Now, now for uh, Team Lammy, if, all these rocks are just basically full 12 foot. So uh, if he can hide one around that corner guard, um, that would eliminate all three. But anyway, looks like he's uh, he sees he thinks he sees enough. He can play the hit, and I'm sure he would like to hide this uh, his shooter somewhere and not leave it open for yeah, a, a, a hit for three. Yeah, I think Jake too. Like if if you try and na uh, navigate around one of those guards and you don't uh, fully bury it, then you could potentially giving up a four spot, right? Yeah, so true I think uh, you know playing the hit here at least it's a bit of damage control, and uh, if he gets the right roll, then uh, he might get the you know the the same outcome as as drawn around the guard if he's if he's fully buried. So key shot here, out of the hands. This is no Ryan's last move. rock of the end. Yeah. Big call on sweeping here. And we got a double, mate. I don't know if that was the called oh, shot, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. certainly a great outcome I, there for, yeah. for uh, Team Lammy. Yeah, that was a huge, huge turnover, I guess. 
So now the discussion uh, amongst Team Simmons is, uh, you know, who's counting? And I believe the blue stone is is Shot Rock, looks to be. So therefore, uh, you know, it's it's uh, basically a draw now for two for Team Simmons. Yeah, plenty of room here in this outturn to make the draw. So a lot of discussion now, I'm sure, about weight. Um, you know, he, he, the feedback that Andrew will be asking from his front end is uh, kind of what type of split he'll be looking for. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm, you know, asking if, uh, if, if they've observed any, you know, uh, around ice and uh, ice call. Yeah. So open draw for uh, two. And we got a heavy, heavy sweep here by the front end. Alex is looking like he's coming out to, to give a hand. So he needs full 12 foot. Uh, look, the rock uh, weight looks good to me. Great sweep and shot made. So score two by Teen Simmons as we wrap up uh, action here in uh, end number four. Uh, so one more end to go before our mid-game break. Uh, so we're off to the uh, to the fifth, and we'll be back momentarily. Welcome back to the uh, to fifth end of play in this uh, semifinal in the Canadian, sorry, for the Canadian Championship for uh, uh, to attend the Canadian Championships for Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, big two ender there by Andrew Simmons in the fourth. So now Team Lammy has a has the hammer. Quick update on ice uh, two in the ladies uh, semifinal. Uh, Stacy 
Uh, Curtis uh, steals yet another st- uh, rock, so it's uh, now 3-0 uh, over Team Boland, and they're playing the uh, fifth end. So a big score too uh, in the four, in the fourth by Team Simmons uh, certainly puts uh, uh, advantage in in their court. Uh, so in the fifth now we'll see uh, McNeil Lansom pushing hard for to to get their deuce and hopefully uh, keep the game uh, tied as they move into the break. Uh, so uh, pretty important he- end here uh, to see uh, you know where the momentum is taking us as we move into the later stages of the game. Just to, uh, I guess, introduce uh, Team uh, Team Lammy. I guess the uh, the lead is Aaron Feltham. The second we've already talked about, Graham Weagle. Uh, third is Daniel Bruce, and of course, skipper Ryan McNeil Lamswood. And uh, certainly a great team. Has had a great week of curling. Absolutely, and uh, I know Aaron. Aaron joined the squad uh, last year. Um, he's son of Rod Feltham. I've played Rod uh, many times, actually, yes. in the club champion, uh, club uh, curling championships uh, at provincials at the provincial level. Um, and Rod, I think, uh, uh, spent a fair bit of time curling with uh, uh, Mr. Scott Davidge, uh, who I uh, chat with on a regular basis through Messenger. And uh, so yeah, they're uh, uh, living in in uh, Gander, and uh, I believe Gander uh, Rink trying to get things. I th- think they've got new ice making out there now, and uh, trying to get that club uh, back on the move. So uh, wishing that community uh, luck to uh, get yeah. a vibrant club going again. Lots of great memories playing in Gander. So let's hope they continue. And of course, Gary Ryan is coaching this team as well. Only Ganders, I think one of the the only clubs in the province I have not yet played in. Oh my, <laughs> I played Stephenville, I think three or four times. Well, and, you must. Uh, yeah, Cornerbrook. We just uh, finished playing the seniors out there, and uh, actually had a, a good duel against you, uh, you and squad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was Always that was an, that was an eventful game. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. We won't get into that. No, we won't get into it. <laughs> Let's just say when you uh, play in senior curling and seniors. To be fair to all of us, is only 50 years and above. Yes. Uh, but one of the most important things next to bringing your curling shoes is your MCP card. <laughs> 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 and, uh, anyway, yeah, we had another uneventful year at the Senior Championship, <laughs> but lots of fun. And uh, talking to Rob Thomas, Rob had his medic room set up. He yes. had uh, inversion <laughs> tables and <laughs> rollers and <Jeez>. thumpers. <laughs> oh, no. All right, back to the action. So uh, looks like uh, Simmons laying two. And center guard in play, so. So at this point, it, it looks as though uh, Simmons has, has had, you know, control of the game for the most part uh, for the first half. Uh, it's been, you know, constant pressure pretty much on uh, Team McNeil Lamswood, but they've responded, uh, you know, each time that uh, there's been uh, significant pressure placed on them, they've uh, executed on their shots. Uh, you know, obviously the, the deuce in, uh, in, in the fourth wasn't uh, in the plan for McNeil Lamswood, but uh, it was looking at there, there could absolutely have been a score of three. So they did yeah. dodge that bullet. Yeah. Two, the two was tolerable for sure. Mm. But uh, come up short there. That's uh, nothing like that. And we see last night, even Jake, when we talk about you know uh, surviving big scores. So uh, in uh, the game against uh, Team Young, Team Young had scored a four actually in. Uh, mm. I can't remember what end it was, but uh, nonetheless, you know that that's a big score. And uh, Team Simmons was already had two on the board. So uh, as you know, he was he was only down two at that point, and that's the way you got to look at that. That uh, yeah, they might have gotten a score of four, but you know what? We're still we're only yeah. down two. So. It's a net two, yeah. Yeah. So it's a call for another guard up front and block the path to that blue stone that's on the button. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's no need for Team Simmons to get overly aggressive in this uh, particular end because uh, a steal of one will be a quite a good outcome uh, from their perspective. And uh, so we will see a, a protection of that stone that's in the four. And uh, the other thing that's important, it's not like a lonely blue because uh, there is that uh, they're sitting actually one, two. Uh, and uh, one, two uh, with both stones behind heavy cover. And Colin Thomas throws the perfect guard. So, yeah, we'll see a clean up of the front here uh, to give uh, McNeil Lambswood a, an opportunity at something uh, later in the, in the end here as we move down the rock count. So key here, Jake, would be that uh, you don't want any granite left out front. So that uh, rock they're throwing now, they want to see roll away, and uh, hopefully they're, uh, they're going to make a play on two of those blue stones. Looks close. And that's a great shot made right there. Beauty. Andrew, just checking my uh, <clears throat> texts, et cetera. And uh, we've got an, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got an international audience uh, this morning. Oh. We've got viewers in Norway. Awesome. We've got a viewer in the Isle of Man. Isle of Man. Do you Man. know where the Isle of Man is? I have no idea where it no, is. I might have to check don't. it on Google there now. It, it's an island that's actually bigger than Bell Island. And it's in the Irish Sea between England and, and Ireland. Well, greetings from uh, to and, our inter international and uh, we viewers. We have people from Mount Pearl. <laughs> so there you go. And I'm sure there's the odd one from Briggs Junction too. Yeah. So anyway, full international audience, and glad you're all joining us this morning. Happy to have you viewing. And if I could say hello in Norway I, or Norwegian, I would, but uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> Just say skull. <laughs> Cheers, isn't it? Norwegian. Actually, I've been to Norway. Uh, uh, my uh, wife's uh, cousin, she was living over there for a period, her and her, her husband. And uh, we were in the town of Bergen. And uh, uh, beautiful country. Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing that impressed me about Norway was, uh, was the road system. Uh, they have to every nook and cranny in uh, Norway, and there's many islands in Norway, and the bridges are spectacular to bridges, each of those. Tunnels, yeah, 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 beautiful. The, the investment in infrastructure would uh, uh, blow your mind, actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I won't get into it, but I, I do have a story about the uh, the bike rod of champions uh, that we did in, in Norway, and at, at another time, perhaps I'll, I'll get break, into it. We'll get into that. Maybe, yeah. 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 Off, off camera. <laughs> Yeah, so nothing really changed here. Now, uh, I guess Simmons is putting another guard on that. And the, the major difference here now, Jake, is that uh, it's a single guard yeah. uh, versus the, the two guards that uh, McNeil Lancewood had been facing uh, uh, prior to their, uh, their double, uh, exec uh, executed double. Uh, so um, Yeah, so it makes it testy for Colin Thomas. This yeah. guard has to be in the perfect position. Yeah. And for McNeil Amswood, the, the next peel attempt, uh, you might even see them try to, to get uh, make contact with that yellow yes. that's at the top of the rings in order to uh, perhaps uh, either one, out count that blue that's in the, at the four o'clock position or uh, make contact with the, uh, the blue that's in, in the four foot. So I think it's just a straight takeout on that top yellow. Uh, no. That wouldn't be the case here. Uh, yeah, running that blue. Running hey? the blue back, yeah. yeah. Looks close. Okay, where's wow, that going? that's a good. That's a good shot. Very nice. Like a triple takeout? Yeah, indeed. So <laughs> where we had, uh, as we wow. talked about just a moment ago, where that back blue where Andrew was sitting to and uh, trying to avoid having the lonely blue, well, now we got the lonely blue. So important for Team Simmons now to uh, try and again sit two 
Uh, so rock position here is going to be key. And uh, that rock in the blue, or sorry, the, the blue in the uh, forefoot, uh, totally exposed now. So that sets up a uh, hit and roll uh, attempt at some point from McNeil Lampswood. So, you know, mm. a critical uh, shot choice here uh, to try and uh, keep the momentum on the uh, Simmons side. So we'll, we'll see what they, uh, what they settle with. Yeah. What are your thoughts on a shot choice here, Jake? I'm thinking he's playing a guard, but he's got a, it's going to be a testy one, right? Would you ever play uh, that back yellow uh, just to, again, eliminate a potential counter and uh, to, again, sit two? Yeah, you, you could. The yellow is fully buried. Um, so I think what he's looking at doing is, is playing the draw or a, a kind of a split. So he's going to push the blue rock that's on the button. Um, a little bit, to, say, push it to the left and then roll the shooter under the guard. Right, so therefore the, any roll attempt would be m uh, more difficult. Yeah. And uh, at the same time uh, achieve that outcome of, of sitting two again. Yeah. And this is a, you know, this is a huge shot. Whatever he's playing, I mean, he's got to, he needs to make it or it gives an opportunity for uh, uh, Team Lammy to get right back in the game with a multiple point. Yeah, I mean, if he if he leaves himself here open to a double, uh, then uh, you'd mm. see Team Lambswood sitting three, which mm. would be a huge shift in uh, in momentum for this end. I think he's just playing the straight draw to lie two. So this rock looks like it's sliding pretty good. So I'd probably be sweeping this rock to try and get it back as, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I think that double is there. I don't know. It depends on the angle. Yeah. You'd have to hit that. Uh, looks to be about a, a quarter of the rock that Simmons just threw, the one that's on the top of the forefoot. It looks to be about a quarter of the rock open. So, you know, there's certainly enough that the double can be made. Yeah, you'd, I don't think you'd have to throw it pretty firm. Uh, cause yeah. you, you got to hit it almost just off nose in order, and then get enough momentum to kick that other blue. So uh, not an easy shot here uh, for the double by any stretch. Or the other, th you're the thinking. The good news is the rock, they're not far enough apart to go through the hole. So right. you're going to hit You're going to catch something. Yeah. yeah. And you were thinking of uh, that higher stone making contact with yes. that one first. And Hit then, that one uh, first, yeah. yeah. Not much of that stone showing. You think of a quarter? About a quarter, yeah. Okay. Or as Team Guzzi would say, a thin quarter? A thin quarter. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. My daughter, uh, <laughs> she's playing basketball now. And uh, I, first game when I go to watch, it's there's five quarters <laughs> i'm like what is this don't you play quarters in basketball but there was five uh, five periods i don't even know what to call it now you know as a as a long time basketball player i was quite confused <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if you're in school today and and you got to do some uh some math if, if the answer can be a thin quarter instead of <laughs> Five sixteenths or something kind of, kind of like hooked that on, work hooked on phonics for math <laughs> yeah. is it <laughs> yeah uh, the answer is a thin quarter thin quarter Almost a quarter. Uh, yeah, so a lot of discussion. I don't know if a timeout has been called here. I don't think so because nope. uh, Gary's not out on the ice. But uh, so a lot of discussion about this shot. Um, so it was, you know, for a shot that we thought was, you know, yeah. questionable whether or not it was a made shot, uh, obviously was yeah. because it's uh, causing a lot of debate here amongst uh, Team Lammy. So it's not possible to come off the rock that's in the bu on the button and hit the back of the other blue. I think they're too, they're too deep, is it? Yeah, too not, deep? you won't get enough momentum no. off that stone to do no. anything with that upper blue. So, uh, But I'd like to double here. Uh, I mean, if if it doesn't curl, you're hitting the rock on the button, and and with any luck, you're you're sticking around in the uh, in the eight foot. Yeah. I mean, the other shot choice, Jake, is is to throw like you know a control or even a board, uh, because if you yeah. you actually touch that blue and move yeah. it back enough, and then you you push the other blue that's in the the in, in towards by the button back of the house, yeah, that wouldn't be a, a terrible outcome either. No. 
So I think they're playing the double. So again, like a control, uh, control weight hit. This stone looks He's to be moving early. hard. Yeah, not the outcome that they were looking for in this uh, for that particular shot choice. So, uh, no, and unfortunately, it rolled over to provide some coverage for the rock and the button. Now Pretty it does quite weight. I was, yeah, I, I thought he was going to throw a lot more weight on that. Yeah, well, you know, again, because you could have had that outcome, as I said, like chip, yeah, chip that chip top it, blue yeah. and then push the other blue to the back of the house. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, uh, either picked or, or got that stone going uh, to collide with the uh, the guard up top. Um, on the positive side for this, uh, you know, it does leave uh, Team Simmons. Uh, I think has no choice but to either throw. Uh, well, the choice would be throw a guard here. Because uh, that double now is is much easier. Yes. Uh, right with uh, with that st other upper stone fully exposed. So, yeah, yeah, they're looking at uh, probably bringing a, a third rock into play. I, I agree with that uh, because you know even if the double is made, then you've uh, you're still going to hold them to one, um, and maybe even steal one. And this is Andrew's first of two, right? No, this is Andrew's last, last. rock. Okay. Yeah, this this is a uh, you, you could almost Jake um, play a guard to kind of cover off two of these stones because leaving the outside of that uh, blue, um, this double is still there. Yeah. But uh, with that blue coming off, I don't know if there's a catcher. No, there isn't a catcher in the back of the house. So yeah, I mean it's it's, it's a tough uh, again a, a tough call here in order to try and and protect. Mm. Um, Either which way you look at it, there is there will always be some type of a double attempt on those on those rocks or uh, a single takeout on that uh, on that blue. So that's what yeah, where Alex, Alex is is, is pr showing there. I mean that's ideal if yeah. you put it there. Yeah, um, you kind of cover off. You know that that's yeah. your best attempt to try and cover off. Uh, you know, taking two shots away, right? Yeah. And you got some flexibility with this. If he happens to be a little heavy, the rock comes into the house uh, for a delay three, and which you know, is never bad. No, it's not <laughs> a bad thing. Yeah, you know, I don't know if there's ever a time. And that I don't you... know if, if that happens. I don't know how uh, Team Lammy scores more than one. Right, right. Time will tell. So a guard attempt just short of the house and on, I'm the, on the center line. Yeah, I mean, and for Team Simmons here too. I mean, if if the, he leaves any opening for a, a potential uh, a double and for the shooter to stick, he's given up a three spot. Hmm. So it's a heavy sweep here to uh, keep that rock as straight as possible. This rock is curling. It's curling hard. So that double attempt is wide open. Yep. I'd say it's worth the, worth the gamble, but I don't really see what other alternative there is. No, I mean you now you, know, you would approach it two ways. You could you could you could hit it on the outside and just slash it across, uh, make the double that way. But your shooter goes. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I still think there's enough room. He can come by, squeeze by that long guard and and take the two blues. Yeah, I, I like that up weight in turn hit. Yeah. Uh, all you got to do is just touch that uh, the stone that's uh, a little higher uh, of, the, of the two blue stones, and uh, that's a double. You could see your shooter roll over the top, right? Like you, you touch those two stones and they, that shooter just kind of mm. around the horn type of action, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, whether or not your your stone hangs on. But either which way, you, you know, you're, you're looking at a score of a two. Well, the other option is just play, you know, a back line weight shot, in turn, tap the rock that's on the button for one. Hard not to take on that uh, double, though. Yeah, I know. Try and score the three. Oh, oh, got a timeout. Timeout. So we'll see Coach Gary now out, out onto the ice now shortly. 
while I was breaking the action, I'll just bring you up to date on the ladies game. Uh, they finished five, uh, and in the fifth end, Sarah Boland picked up her one. So that means in the sixth, uh, team Curtis is up three to one with Hammer. So they're up two with Hammer playing six. So the, you know, scoring a one, uh, might seem to be, you know, certainly that that's uh, desirable for uh, uh, Stacy uh, Curtis. Uh, however, sometimes just getting rid of the hammer, yeah, you know, change uh, the strategy. A bit, absolutely, yeah. if you can start, uh, you know, putting some pressure on the other team, uh, and they might get into steel country, and uh, we might see a tighter game. So a lot of discussion here on how to approach, uh, you know, the takeout of these uh, one or two of these uh, blue stones. I think, you know, what is um, concerning for the McNeil Amswood squad is the angle of those stones because uh, uh, I don't think there's a either uh, uh, risk of, of a jam uh, to outcount those two yellow, but certainly your shooter uh, could actually ride right over the top. Yeah. I, I suppose that the jam p potential, Jake, is uh, if that you push that blue, you don't get enough contact to that uh, blue in the button, and it just kind of pushes it back to that yellow uh, that's that's in the back of the house. Uh, then you're giving the end away. Yeah. it's uh, There's no – none of the shots are easy here, but I guess it um, – It's, it's how you feel, yeah. You know, if, exactly. If your lambs would like, what? Do, how? What do you see? How does? How does it feel? What the yeah. ice? Well, how am I? How am I throwing the intern? You know, these are the things that we can't, you know, we can't understand watching the game. Um, you know, sometimes you look at a stone and it looks very makeable. Yeah. You're sitting in the heck, and sometimes you're wishy washy on it, and not probably not a great call to make if you're if you're wishy washy. <laughs> So looks they're uh, sizing up the angles uh, for actually to hit the outside uh, broom side of the rock uh, to play the double. Uh, they don't uh, well. Yeah. Playing this double actually, uh, they might end up getting the catcher uh, on the blue if they hit it uh, at the right angle, and uh, still would have the, the, the potential score of three. But I think right now they're just really wanting to get a, a score of two. So they're on it right away, right out of uh, Ryan's hand. And we got a yeah. steal of one here. That's uh, that's an unfortunate, uh, I guess, turn of events there for, for Team Lammy as uh, they would have really liked to have uh, at least scored on that end. Uh, so giving up a steal uh, to put Simmons up three going into the break. Uh, we'll see now if... Uh, if things can kind of get uh, the ship can get righted for uh, Team Lammy now uh, after the break. All right. Well, that's it. So uh, five ends of play. We've got five more to come. So stay tuned. Lots of great curling to happen yet, and we'll be back in uh, back in a few minutes.
Welcome back to uh, the Remax Center, home of the St. John's Curling Club, on this Sunday morning for the continuation of the Provincial Men's Curling Championship in our semifinal game with uh, Andrew Simmons against Team uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood. So quite a game so far. Big, uh, big steal there in the fifth, as we saw, and uh, putting uh, Simmons up four to one. And while we got a minute, I'd just like to take an opportunity to, on behalf of the teams, to thank the uh, sponsors that assist them in, in uh, conducting their journey to, uh, to represent the province. So for Team Simmons, uh, they're sponsored by Hardline, Hardline Nation, which, of course, the makers of the ice pad uh, curling room. And for uh, Team Ryan McNeil Lambswood, World Energy, World Energy GH2. And CIB CIBC Wood Gundy uh, support the team. And uh, again, for, on behalf of both the teams, thanks so much for the sponsors' uh, support. Uh, it means the world to them. So, Andrew, big uh, steal there. And now, uh, now it's a three point deficit, not insurmountable. Um, this, in these playdowns, we're into 10 end games, which is, is different than the weekly curling we all do, which is eight. So it still gives five ends to play. So hour and a half of curling left. And 10 ends is a grind, Jake. Yeah. Um, you, you'll see, I guess you've seen the, the change in strategy now with uh, Team Simmons. Um, you know, previous ends, it was uh, put your center guard up, wrap around. And now with a, uh, a lead of three, uh, we see the two stones uh, put in top four and top eight. Uh, which is a typical uh, strategy is that, uh, you know, you're covering off the scoring area, reducing it in a big way. Yeah. And because, uh, you know, Team Simmons knows that uh, in order for McNeil Lambswood to generate some offense, they're going to go with the corner guard uh, option, and uh, which they did. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how things develop. But uh, you might see some, you know, stacking of rocks. Uh, you're going to certainly see a lot more in play now. Yeah. yeah. So certainly an early uh, setup in the favor of uh, Team Simmons there with the center guard and two rocks in the forefoot. Little bump back here. And that's a great shot made by uh, McNeil Lambswood's uh, team here. And uh, just to move those stones around, uh, set up yeah. some different angles. And partially frozen on the front, mm -hmm. yellow on front of the blue. Yeah, you can't get to the nose of that yellow rock, uh, so uh, any type of hit attempt is just going to simply jam on that blue rock. Mm -hmm. So Team Simmons here just kind of keeping the front clean and uh, to eliminate any type of uh, real offensive uh, opportunities by McNeil Lambswood. And uh, so trying to keep the game a little bit simple and uh, keep the scoring opportunity uh, at a minimal. So Jake, uh, one thing about tankers is uh, uh, when this is a special time of year and uh, one that, you know, uh, new curlers, old curlers, you'll see everybody at the rink. And uh, I just had to run out to my car to grab my phone. I had it left out there. And uh, on, on the way out, I ran into Stephen Ryan. So uh, oh, Stephen. Uh, Dr. Ryan. Dr. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Long time curler. Uh, him and his uh, significant other just came in. I noted that uh, uh, he's expecting, uh, oh. uh, and uh, his wife uh, is about uh, a, a week out from uh, having their child. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, our, our curling community just grows bigger. And I asked Steve, and I said, you know, when are you coming back? And uh, so no commitment, but he said uh, at some point you, you might see his grand return. Yeah, that would be <laughs> great. I certainly wish, uh, wish them both well. Update on ice two, uh, Stacy uh, Curtis just had an open draw for two. It came up a couple of feet light, so she did get her one. So that puts her up uh, four to one after uh, after six ends of play. So important to note too, Jake, I'm sure you're, you're kind of got uh, eyes on both sheets as your uh, daughter is playing with, uh, with Team Curtis. So uh, 
I know Jess, uh, very active uh, in the curling world. Uh, you know, she went out and played. I think she was, uh, uh, who'd she partner up with in the, the double? Oh, she mixed doubles with Greg Smith. Greg so they Smith, won the right. event. Yeah. yeah. So she's off to, uh, where is it? Fredericton, I think. Fredericton, For yeah. the mixed doubles. Yep. In a few weeks. Awesome. It's another heart yeah. to put on her, on yes. her, uh, her wall of honor. Yeah. <laughs> So again, uh, this is a draw, is it? Come around and to the blue. Yeah, I would think. And, uh, you know, as we talked about with team Simmons, trying to, to keep things a little bit simple, um, not a lot of raw, there's nothing uh, up front. And, uh, so everything now is going to be moving around, setting up angles, uh, and try and create something here for, uh, McNeil Lancewood, I'm sure trying to score some sort of multiple. Nice looking rock here. Little bump back. Yeah, probably would have liked that a little lighter, but yeah. not too bad. So I don't think there's any type of double off those yellows. That blue was certainly in the way of uh, obstructing that uh, look shot be, choice. No. Colin Thomas now. We talked about Colin. He's He won the Canadian University Championship. He did. Years yeah, ago. So, yeah. uh, Man, he's uh, he's represented uh, on the, you know, nationally in the junior uh, mm -hmm. level as well. I think that's our only Canadian uh, University Championship that the province has ever won. Was that that trip when he traveled to Japan? Yeah. 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 Quite an experience. Absolutely. And of course, we got Kaylee Locke and Simon uh, Perry now over in Korea uh, at the uh, Junior Olympics, uh, representing uh, our province as well as uh, obviously playing for, uh, playing as Team Canada. So good luck to them. I think they're two and zero. I heard last night they beat uh, Hungary. So they've beaten. Uh, so the, I think Republic well, of Korea and Hungary in the first two games. Yeah. So the home team. And, uh, and, and I hear they're playing Nigeria. Who even knew Nigeria had curling? <laughs> kind of like the Jamaican well, guess, bobsled yeah, team. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a hit on the yellow, and actually wow. that double was there, Jake. I yes. didn't think it was there. I didn't either. It was no. So awesomely uh, executed shot there by uh, by Colin. Yeah. So one shot pretty much takes uh, every bit of offense away from uh, Team McNeil Amswood, and uh, so again trying to produce something here, uh, you know, using those two blue stones as uh, some form of obstacle. Uh, to yeah, try so I guess his choice now: do we do we come around the blue in the house and try for a deuce, or just play a hit now and go for the blank? Yeah, I mean, go for the blank you know, end and try again in in seven. Yeah, not ideal to give up the uh, the hammer in six. No, don't but, be doing uh, that. You know, it, it, you got to try and generate some uh, some type. They they definitely want to score a multiple, and uh, so you know the way the rocks are setting up right now, it's not looking that way. So uh, blank is is likely going to be the outcome here. And we got a bit of a jam yeah. there on that uh, back blue. Yeah, they need. Uh... Can't get a break. No, wrong, I tell you. say the wrong side of the inch? Wrong uh, side of the need inch. To, need yeah. to turn that around. That was such a nice throw and just not quite where he needed to be. And there's times, Jake, this game yeah. is you got to work yeah. and scrape and crawl yeah. for yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything you can get, you know, and it seems to be that way so far in the game for yeah. McNeil Amswood. Yeah, so it doesn't take much to turn it around, you know. No, just definitely a not. a little tiny bit yep. sharper and yep. things happen, so. So yeah, I think the blank is where they want to go this for this end now. Rack them up again in the seventh. Rack them up, yeah. And even on that that pre previous shot that for that yellow not to uh, stay in the rings was uh, definitely an unfortunate outcome uh, on that shot. So I think a, uh, a draw to the wing here, um, again, to make any type of double uh, a, a difficult shot. Uh, higher, as much separation as they can get here, uh, would be what they're, they're seeking to achieve. Three. 
hard sweep here by the front end. Again, the rock looks uh, like it's got, uh, it'll definitely make rings. And now we're just sweeping for rock placement. Yep, good, good shot. Yep. So where that rock is placed, any type of a double attempt is going to uh, result in a yellow rollout. Um, so again, uh, if McNeil Amswood's uh, intent is to blank this end, then it certainly sets up well for that. Um, certainly, you know, the other option, Jake, is just to hit a roll in the rings and, and hope for some type of jam uh, if uh, Simmons tries to, to play takeout. Uh, but with that amount of separation, uh, the jam is highly unlikely. Uh, so I think you'll you'll see this uh, double attempt to try and uh, keep that blank in in play. Yes. So early call for the sweep here. And we got a nose hit, pretty much. Oh no, little roll out. Roll out. So you'll see the same. I'm sure the same type of shot here by Team Simmons. So he's hoping uh, by sitting two that uh, that double attempt won't be uh, won't be tried again, and that uh, they'll just uh, leave uh, McNeil Lansford with a draw for yeah, uh, I think for the he'll force. Be forced to take his yeah. one, uh, it'd be a big gamble to try that double again for uh, for the blank. So, Jake, question on your own uh, curling plans for the rest of the year. Um, I know Masters. I, <laughs> after, was, after a week in Cornerbrook, it's called recovery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> so, so is is the Masters uh, uh, on the agenda for you guys? I, well, we were. That was why we played this year, but uh, some personal schedules meant uh, we couldn't all attend the Masters. So, we're thinking about it. If we can muster up a force and we might play. Yeah, yeah. We got a couple more days before the deadline, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Check a the newspapers. Of... It'll be in there, I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CNN will cover yeah. it. And we're, we're the, uh, the Masters uh, Nationals, it, we're. Oh, that I don't know. Don't know. No. Okay. And no. uh, was there any competition in the province? Was there any other teams? Uh, Jeff Thomas, I believe, is, is uh, hoping to play in the Masters. Okay. So, so we got uh, the old. Uh, yeah. Uh, Silver Fox uh, going yeah. up against uh, the KG Jeff Thomas. Yeah, potentially, yeah. yeah. We'll see. And Jeff yeah. had a great showing, actually, at the seniors. He uh, did. Yeah. yeah he, right uh, to the last rock. Right to the last rock. And uh, they were looking good out there. I know yeah. we uh, we played them in the uh, our uh, second game, and uh, they didn't miss much, I tell you. They, they played real well. So an open hit, I guess. He's playing for his one. Yeah, and we got a uh, hit and a roll, hey, oh and we got a roll my, out. Oh wow, boy, that's a tough. Uh, when things go south, eh? Yeah, that, that's a tough outcome too for bad. for Team uh, McNeil Lambswood, and uh, yeah, when the, when the day is going like that for you, it's mm. it's hard to stay motivated. Yeah. However, you know you got to look at the scoreboard. I know you're down four, uh, but certainly, you know, for this uh, point, it's uh, try and get your deuce on the board. Try to get a deuce exactly. Yeah. So that's a steal of one. So uh, put Simmons up five to one after six. So another hour curling. Lots of, uh, still lots of time. We'll be back momentarily.
Welcome back, everybody. Glad you could join us again this morning for the uh, semifinal here in the men's provincial championship with Andrew Simmons playing uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood and uh, big steal there in the six. Unexpected, I guess we didn't uh, think for a minute that was a that was a steal uh, set up. So anyway, a uh, bit of a break for Simmons and he's up five to one. But as we just talked about, still an hour's curling left and. Uh, Things can happen. Get the rocks set up. So we see uh, Lambs would put up the uh, the corner guard, and uh, now he's going to put the double corner up. Alex uh, just bumped that blue rock actually uh, back T line. So that's really an advantage for Team Lammy. Alex not happy with that one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, usually, as we talked about in the uh, previous, uh, your, your objective, uh, if your team Simmons is to stack those, like have yeah. top, you know, top four, top eight type thing. So yeah. to have these stones now, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of feeding into, uh, McNeil Lambswood strategy now with, uh, utilizing these corner guards. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see now how this, and the other side of it too, Jake, is that, uh, that four foot now is fully open for, at some point for McNeil Lambswood to get out of this end. Yeah. Uh, so that's the other reason why, uh, you know, team Simmons would like to focus playing in that area. Yeah. Yeah. If you're up, if you're up five to one, last thing you want to be doing is going around the opposition's corner guards. You know, that's not the normal strategy. So, uh, uh my experience is it. it Often doesn't work out in your favor. No, no. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see. Yeah, because uh, all so it takes, big, you know, you, this is a big end. This is a turnaround end for for Team Lammy. They, you know, they to get a multiple score here. Yeah. So you put one stone a bit deep. Yeah. Um, then all of a sudden, well, <laughs> Craig Craig Dowden, my uh, yeah, uh, my teammate on uh, Team uh, Pettigrew, he uh, he talked about. Um, uh, one of the, the players, uh, Mott, uh, who he, Peter Hollett, yeah. Peter Hollett, Dr. yeah, Dr. who Hollett. he played with, he said, all we need is one corner guard and then we'll stack eight right behind yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Bring it deep boys, make room for lots more. Yeah, you know? That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this rock, the blue rock that was just thrown is open. So it's available for just to tap back, um, which is what they're attempting here. Yeah, so we got a heavy curve, and that stu blue stone just yeah. We got a lot of backing now yeah. set up in in the back, and yeah, it's uh, a great setup for a team. Great Lamy. setup, um, and certainly where those stones are positioned, the blue ones, uh, blue stones. Uh, any play on that yellow again sets yeah. up a jam, yeah. and then we'll see uh, play action happening for sure. So I think that yellow stone is fully exposed. Uh, however, it would ver be very tough to get to uh, to get to the nose it's of that one. Interesting. I think Andrew took a lot of flack last night for not peeling in the extra end. Yes. So I don't think he's making any any uh, any mistake today. Yeah. And those yeah. that guard's going. I'd say right about now, whether it's the right call or not, the guard's going. Yeah. Well, I know our, our comment uh, that night when uh, with that shot, shot, shot choice, and uh, so Paul Harvey, uh, the great Paul Harvey, uh, yeah. I played a number of years with Paul, and uh, his strategy was sometimes a good offense is a great defense, and uh, yeah. so when when Andrew or I didn't remove, I'm like, you know what, I don't mind that strategy <laughs> either, but uh, it can it can come back to oh, haunt yeah. you. There's no doubt, yeah. Yeah, but if you got a triple in your back pocket, well, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a hell of a shot to win a game. It was fabulous. Such, oh, yeah. And the energy in the club, uh, well, all week has been uh, been tremendous. And uh, for even for a 9 o'clock draw, I went downstairs yeah. to get myself a water, and uh, it's a beehive of activity yeah. down there and lots of great energy. So again, we see, uh, just protecting that stone there a little bit, uh, yeah, probably came up a bit light from yeah, what the desired, uh, call was, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not a bad miss to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. 
I think they wanted to come in, eh? Or ta- tap yeah, it up, I think maybe? they wanted to tap it up, yeah. But, uh, you know, you yeah, still, you, not, uh... you got two guards now, so it's still going to force the play. And uh, if you don't hit this this shot right, uh, you could, again, what I call the purity, uh, set up the jam jam. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you'll, you'll see, uh, you know, things things go uh, McNeil Lamso's way. But you hit any part of the uh, broom side of this stone and uh, it should be uh, easily come out of play. So great shot there made by Colin Thomas. We got the, the double made. Uh, so again, uh, Team McNeil Lambswood is uh, just trying to tr- generate something here again now. Uh, hopefully yeah. to, get, to get a stone uh, buried into that forefoot uh, would be the, the start of that. And he's got the guard and he's got uh, the backing in the back eight foot. So uh, something to work with. Yeah. Quick update, Andrew over on ice two with the ladies. Uh, Sarah Boland, she uh, took her one point and seven. So they're playing eight with uh, Stacy Curtis up four to two. So she got a two point advantage with Last Rock. Right. Yeah. In eight. And of course, the winner of that game goes to the final against uh, Team Brooke Gosland. And that final, as well as the men's final, will be two thirty this afternoon. Yeah, so, uh, you know, and that's when the hardware gets passed out. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the intensity uh, just increases with every yeah. game. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I'm sure it will be uh, a quite quite an afternoon down here, uh, you know, seeing two championships uh, handed out. And, you know, I guess it's just the last couple of years, actually, that we've been uh, hosting uh, both the Scotties and the, uh, the Tankers uh, concurrently. Uh, usually it's uh, been, you know, uh, separate tournaments. So uh, it's great to see, actually. Yeah, it's and, great uh, having both both for, uh, for curling fans, Both yeah. championships at the one time, yeah. All right, nice, uh, nice draw. Come around there. And now uh, Colin Thomas is going to try the run back. Oh, just squeak just. that one by. Look at that. Um, so again, we talked about you know, how momentum can uh, can change in a game uh, with one shot, and uh, here we see uh, Jeff that we've got uh, with that just off nose yeah. miss. Uh, you've you know that blue stone now acts as a guard for uh, McNeil Lambswood. Yeah, and the yellow th- stone was partially under that that blue. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh, so we we call it the Christmas tree. A Christmas tree, it All is. Right? Yeah. So you can put it in again. Have two uh, yellow stones. It doesn't have to be fully buried. It can just show a piece, and therefore there's no opportunity at a double. And uh, you know they can certainly craft up a, a score or two here. Boy, they're working on this. Both sweepers on it, so obviously weight is the issue. They are sweeping hard on this one. Look at them go. They're by the Need front. to get that in for second shot. And it looks like it might be just shy of be being shy, second yeah. shot. Yeah, uh, That's too bad. So certainly appreciate all the viewers um, that join us here today. And, uh, and again, both games, both the men's and women's uh, – finals will be broadcast on this YouTube channel um, at 2.30 this afternoon. So uh, we look forward to seeing everyone then. And we've had, uh, from what I've heard from Trevor Bartlett, our, uh, our technical captain, we'll call him, uh, he's been keeping a close eye on the, the number of viewers, and uh, we've had some strong viewership this yes, week. wonderful. And uh, I believe at uh, one game we had over 300 uh, viewers, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, Tom, I just got some uh, feedback uh, from Trevor, and uh, we've got about 250 viewers right now. So Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. That could represent 500 people because... Yep, multiple... Quite often, there's, yep, there's multiple a couple of folks. people staring yep. at a computer. Yeah. I know one thing I like to do... Uh, you know, with with the HDMI cable, I'll I'll uh, run it right to the main TV in the house. Oh, and uh, we'll have a crowd sitting around and uh, and watching the action. 
I mean, it's a great option to have uh, it uh, web broadcast, but I got to say, there's nothing like coming down to the club and uh, seeing it live uh, with uh, with all the other uh, folks from the current community. So I guess Simmons is uh, looking at a, maybe a freeze draw in on top of the yellow. Again, that that's a it's it's a gutsy shot. We'll, we'll say because uh, if it's not made, uh, you know, perfectly, then. Uh, you know, you're you're putting a three yeah. a potential three in play. Um, looks like he's taking ice for. He's going to try to pick like it out. Looks like he's going to pick it out. Yeah. He's thrown a few rocks in the same spot, so I think he's got a fair level of comfort in this area. Yeah. He knows what the ice is going to do. You can see about a half a rock. Yeah, and again, uh, we're talking shot choice, so he's throwing a down weight hit, um, which I've said earlier, you know, this is a, a, a shot that Andrew has gotten quite comfortable with throwing, and uh, the aim of this one is for his shooter to stick around, and that way, uh, again, really applying some pressure uh, to the McNeil Lambs who would rink, because uh, they could invariably be facing... Um, well, they could be facing uh, two counters and maybe uh, maybe even three. So they're on this for line early. Now trying to make Could a we curl. Get a jam there. Just just a squeaker. Yeah, nice stone. So right now we've got uh, Simmons for sure sitting two, I believe. So the rock, the rock back eight foot is uh, shot for sure, isn't it? Yeah. And then I think the one that's at the, about the four o'clock position is uh, out counting the one at the one o'clock position, okay. the yellow at one o'clock. But it's it's tough to see from this so the angle. Rock, the rock yeah. on the Remax balloon, it would be the second shot? I, I believe think. so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's interesting uh, with the um, advertising in our rings uh, <laughs> earlier the year, uh, there was no uh, there was no defined eight foot uh indicator in oh, that yes, in the yeah. balloon of Remax and it made it very difficult uh, in order to see you know which shot you know which rocks were counting so uh, our uh, ice expert and ice maker Harold uh, Walters um, actually at, uh, during the Christmas break uh, put in a, uh, some markers so it made it a little bit easier to yeah. see in the rings who's who yeah, was counting etched, yeah. etched in the eight foot ring yeah, yeah. So, so I guess it's a draw, is it, or is he playing? I don't know if he's playing uh, some type of uh, takeout on that uh, on that blue stone. I Looks think like he, he is. is. Yeah. yeah. So a cross house double, uh, mm. perhaps. Yeah. So this might probably would lead me to believe. Maybe yeah. Maybe they're in line one. Maybe blue is only one. Yeah. Well, he's got I'm lots a, to roll to. Yeah, I'm a hits. bit surprised by this shot choice, though. Um, you know, because if, if you just do, as you s indicated, if you just draw in there, and even if you're partially open, uh, to sit shot uh, would be the other alternative. Shot made. What a beauty. Oh, dandy. Look at that. So yellow is shot and uh, solid under cover. So the risk with that shot and is now given Team Simmons an opportunity uh, again to use those uh, corner guards that are there, and uh, if he puts one in now, shot rock uh, and even partially buried, it's going to make it difficult here for McNeil Lambswood to, yeah. to score the multiple. Yeah, they'll be forced to go give it a single. Is this? I wonder if there's a split there on the top, the yellow at the uh, at one o'clock on the eight foot. I don't know where you, where you're uh, making contact with that rock. Uh, given it's That's we're playing we're uh, playing rings Simmons here, right? To miss all together. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But you're you're hitting that rock away from uh, you know uh, uh, I guess the the eight foot right. Yeah. So I don't know if if you can actually get it to count out count the the back blue. So Simmons is elected for a draw here. Yeah. And uh, like I said, if, if he can get a shot rock and even be partially buried, would be a, a shot made. If he can get it totally buried, would be uh, would be spectacular. So they're just letting this rock run. 
which would indicate it might be a little heavy. So that one's hanging out there a bit, Jake. I don't know if they're going to get the curl. A bit deep. Now it's finishing hard. Look at that move. So looks to me, um, it's going to be a tough shot here for, for a deuce, for sure. Uh, I think if anything, he, he wants to, uh, play, a, uh, is, make uh, a play on that blue to go through the yellow that blue. blue is from where I'm sitting is completely open. Just it's edge on edge, edge with on that edge. yellow. Yeah. You know, is, can he make a double here? Can he make a double on these blues? If, if, if he risks uh, any type of jam, uh, I, I think it'd be tough for him then to hold his shooter uh, for no, but can he, for can he hit it straight back and just pick? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That one would be, because you you just have to squeeze by that four. yellow. If he... <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. He, he can hit, he'd have to squeeze by that yellow rock on the top eight foot and then drive the blue straight back onto the blue on the back of the eight. And it wouldn't need to be a high weight hit either. No. He, he could make this shot with a, with a control waiter. Yeah, and maybe that's what he's doing. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. I mean, he would have to squeeze by that card by a quarter inch. I mean, the other option here too, Jake, is if he if he makes the, the double the other way and uh, just makes contact with the blue and then rolls uh, the blue he originally makes contact with just behind that yellow, that would still result in a, in a potential score of three. So we got a signal by the front end that this the weight is a little down on this Quiet, hit. Yeah. So it must be close on line. This looks like a close. brilliant. Oh, jam. Oh, we got a jam. So we got a score. We got a single. Yeah, it's just one of these days yeah. that you're just working really hard yeah. for uh, on every shot, and uh, again, like just they getting the wrong side of that inch. Anyway, so he takes his one, so he's uh, closes the gap to three. But uh, Simmons, with you know great c command of this game, he's up five to two after seven, and uh, hammer in the eighth. So we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. So welcome back to our continuing coverage of the uh, semifinal here in the men's championship. Uh, winner of this game goes on to play Greg Smith uh, for the provincial title. So right now, Andrew, I'd say uh, it's safe to say that uh, Andrew Simmons has the upper hand. He's up three. 
uh, and with Hammer. Yeah. So you're going to see um, McNeil Lands will put out the stops to generate any type of uh, opportunity of, of his deal here. And uh, Andrew Simmons is going to try and keep this as simple as possible, uh, eliminating any type of, uh, you know, stones up front. You'll see him make a play on those uh, guards uh, momentarily once uh, the five rock rule is out of the way. And uh, just, like I said, keeping it simple. Objective here, he'll even take a, a single point here in the eighth uh, just to keep the hammer and even ends. And, uh, yeah, just uh, to keep that... Uh, lead of of three uh or, or four if he scores a single uh in play as this game uh progresses through nice stone there top top four and back four so uh while we got a break just want to say look this has been a wonderful experience i've enjoyed the few games i've done and uh Really want to thank uh, Trevor Bartlett. I guess we'll call him our producer because he put he puts a lot of time in, and uh, even he's not here this morning, but he's behind the scenes working from home on our on our uh, production here. And Trevor, we certainly appreciate the effort that you put in. And uh, to our man Tim Healy alongside today, mm. putting the, clicking the buttons and counting the rocks for you guys. We certainly appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. We've had Emily Neary and Kevin Foley helping out on the technical side as well. So it's been uh, it's been great, and I hope you folks at home have enjoyed that. Uh, and uh, been a lot of fun. So we'll we'll take a layoff, I guess. We're we're done after this game, uh, Andrew. Yeah, I got, I just actually got a, a text from uh, uh, Steve Sporty Bragg. Uh, he's at home watching on the big screen as we talked about cooking a few omelets. And uh, he, he thinks he's he's in tough to uh, up our game here this morning, Jake. And uh, so this afternoon we do have uh, Steve Sporty Bragg and uh, Rob Matchbox Thomas. Oh, very good. Uh, the boys are uh, I I call them the uh, the Simon and Garfunkel of cur curling commentary. Uh, the boys will be taking the mics at at two thirty. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll be watching, and uh, I hope you'll join us too. So uh, again, you you mentioned the uh, our our, our uh, uh, production uh, chief Trevor Bartlett, and uh, I can't express enough. Uh, I've heard a lot of feedback, positive feedback, on the uh, quality of the, uh, the cameras that we now have on site and the various camera angles, and uh, it does make for uh, you know uh, for a local uh, you know. We'll say like a cable nine isk type yeah, of yeah. Uh, operation. It, it looks really good, and uh, you know we we've had a lot of fun too doing the commentary, and it it certainly brings uh, a new level because I know uh, watching curling from a lot of other clubs, it's just streaming, and uh, there's no commentary, and uh, you know it's it's good, but yeah. uh, certainly having uh, you know the the folks and uh, local curling knowledge shared by those on the mic uh, certainly gives a little bit of a better feel and uh, much greater entertainment for our viewership. Not meaning to toot my own horn there, no, Jake, but you not know, not talking about you, not me, no, me. definitely not. We're not doing that, no. <laughs> but anyway, they can mute us if they like. So <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> all right, so clear, clear in the front. So yeah, I think this is a race to the finish. This end, I think there's going to be either a, a steal here or going to be game over the way it's set up here now. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you got three blue counters in yeah. there, um, two rocks. I mean, those two rocks that are uh, outdoors guards will be easily, pretty easily removable uh, guards with uh, with a double, hmm. a double run, and uh, then you'll see, you know. Um, just be a lot of play to the house, then moving stones around, just trying to generate something. So, so Daniel Bruce now he's trying the intern come around. So they do have a double guard there. So the front end did indicate that the rock is a bit heavy. So we'll see where it ends up here. Looks pretty good. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. More of them, I don't think they'd be down three at this no, point. No, indeed, yeah. <laughs> Actually, nice a lot stuff. of, uh, nice lot of curl on that one, Jake. Yeah. If, you know, coming outside those stones, I think it might be partially open on the uh, on on the uh, outturned side there, but 
Yeah, so as suspected, Andrew's just going to double off these guards and, uh, again, try and take away any type of uh, pressure that McNeil Lansville can apply. So even if the blue, uh, if the blue happens to roll over to uh, guard off uh, one of Andrew's rocks there in the house, would uh, would be a made made shot. But uh, I think the objective here is is hopefully to have uh, all stones, all granite out front uh, to be uh, out of play. So as uh, mentioned there, we did uh, have that lone blue uh, sitting up front. So that that's to advantage of uh, McNeil Lambswood. Um, the only upside uh, from Andrew's perspective, Andrew Simmons, is that it's a blue stone he yeah. would uh, be utilizing as either to run to the house or uh, uh, to to play on a uh, on a yellow rock. Quick update on uh, the ladies' game. Um, Sarah Boland stole one, so. Uh, Stacy Curtis is up four to three after eight with the hammer playing in nine. So things are certainly tightening up over in the, in yeah. the women's uh, side there, Jake, uh, with yeah. a, a, a score difference of only, uh, only one. And uh, so things are actions heating up over oh, yeah. there for sure. That's not over. Anyway, nice guard here by uh, Daniel Bruce. So down to skip rocks. Sorry, this is Colin Thomas's yeah. last rock for the One end. Rock to go, and then we'll get to uh, the final stones of the uh, of the end. So certainly as the game progresses, you know, uh, you know, when you're carrying a, a three shot, uh, th a three point lead, um, you know, it can make, you know, making the shot, making that much easier, but mm. one miss, it can, can certainly change again, change momentum in, in a game. And, uh, so certainly, you know, the players aren't taking any of these shots light. Uh, yeah. I see a lot of nice focus in there that. by Colin Thomas. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Double. Take care of the front. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, you know pedal to the metal here by all all players. So thinking about a hit, I guess. I think at this stage, I'd, I'd probably be avoiding removal of stones. Yeah, I like uh, moving the stones around, but. Uh, you know, it's it's that uh, risk of you know you're keeping blue in play and uh, potential for a big score, but it also creates jam attempts and uh, something for McNeil Lanswood to generate some some point power. So the, you know, I know McNeil Lanswood would like to, you know, create some type of steal attempt here, but uh, without anything up front, uh, yeah. that's a tall order. So I think order. he's elected to go with the guard, isn't he not? They were motioning to play some type of freeze, but really? uh, I don't know. With that the ice, ice looks like a guard ice. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, just tighten it up. So I think, yeah, they're looking at yeah. guarding off that uh, yellow that's in the uh, forefoot. Yeah. So anything here, uh, you know, two zone, two guard zone, uh, right up to a three is a made shot. And uh, even in, in, towards the rings, it wouldn't be a, a bad even to have a, a nibbler in the in the 12 foot. Um but this rock looks like it's, it's gotten in there nicely, well placed. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly what they called. Yeah, yeah, shot made. So a piece of that yellow was still open, Jake, on the mm. uh, on the intern side. So you might see uh, with that 
placement. It, it's it's a solid two guard, so there's a fair bit of room there for you know uh, Team Simmons to carve one around. So you may see again, uh, as we talked about uh, throughout the broadcast here, of Andrew's uh, preference to to those easy weight hits. Uh, that looks like what's coming. I think you can see about half a rock there. A reasonable chance of making this. It's fairly long guard, isn't it? Fairly long guard. And by come the nose on this one, I think you're pretty much dead on T and uh, would still give McNeil Lambswood uh, like a little freeze tap attempt. Anyway, the boys are so on it earlier. We got a heavy call from the house to uh, keep that rock straight. It's closing in on that uh, yellow. And we've got contact made. So uh, a chip off the top. Again, um, you know, it's it's not a terrible outcome. Certainly not the, the shot uh, call that was uh, in place for Team Simmons. And uh, But getting rid of that guard, that, that's not a bad thing either. Not bad. No. So I think Lammy's looking at uh, maybe just drawing around the, the, the blue rock. Is he just... Yeah, yeah, so he's there. motioned and put a rock there at the, the 12 o'clock position in the, yeah. in the forefoot. Uh, so that does two things. It takes the draw away, and it makes the double very difficult if, yeah. if Andrew decides to take that on. So this is his best attempt now at yeah, I uh, I like that. Yeah, I generating know. some type of steel. Yeah, he really doesn't have to bury. He just... He got he got to have it a little up. partially buried, yeah. uh, you know, because uh, if not, it, it leaves a, a nose uh, run double uh, in play, yeah. and would give Andrew a, a score too, which would essentially, I'd almost say, put the game oh, in yeah, a reach. Yeah. yeah. So key shot here. So we got an early sweep and we got a motion from the house that this rock may be a little outside. That rock looks to be a bit heavy, Jeff. You don't want to set up a double here. To me, that's a made shot. That's a good, that's a good rock position. There's oh, no, perfect, yeah. there's no attempt at a run double. Uh, the only thing I think Andrew may have is to, uh, to run his blue stone into the uh, into the yellows, uh, but certainly sets up a good opportunity for a steal here. So last rock to come here for Andrew Simmons. So the one thing we're not seeing uh, from this vantage point, uh, Jake, is is the shot clock or the uh, the, the game clock. So. Uh, don't really know how the teams are doing from a uh, time perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't seem to be any urgency in, in any of the teams. Like uh, lots of times you'll see the front yeah. end, you know, vigorously yeah. cleaning and getting the rocks off uh, so that they, uh, they you know, save time. Uh, so I can only uh, suspect that uh, their time is not an issue right now for these teams. Yeah, my sense is it's okay. It doesn't feel like they've been too uh, taking too much time all game. And they're pretty well on pace with the ladies' game on the next sheet. So, yeah, yeah, I, I so think they're okay. It looks like Andrew was electing to play that top yellow. So I don't know if he's uh, is he playing to give the steal. I don't know that he can count. Is he? I didn't. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's. Well, it's a heavy sweep. And as suspected, yeah, there's a, a steal of one uh, on, in that end. And uh, so, again, uh, you know, great shot call by McNeil Lanswood to place that stone. Uh, they generated, really generated something out of nothing, didn't they? Yeah, like, they did. Yeah. But that was, a th so he was playing the thin double. He was playing what looked like the thin double. Wow. I didn't think it was there. And no. uh, yeah. as evidenced by the outcome, uh, you know, yeah. I think he made the shot the best he could. Yeah. And uh, 
I, you know what? In in hindsight, I, I wonder if if running his own blue, yeah, because yeah, it I, was a short run, right? Yeah, he was he was looking seriously at it. I figured that's who he was going to play, but yeah. that was a thin double. And I guess they really need to stay on that. Yeah, the sweep need to be stay on the sweep. Anyway, so uh, steal a one and uh, exciting finish. We'll yeah. be back uh, in twenty seconds. Welcome back to the ninth end and this uh, continuing coverage of our semi-final in the men's championship. We got a couple of guards up front by Team Lammy and uh, Alex Smith has made a lovely draw to the top button. And now he's, uh, I think he was trying to freeze that, but uh, stayed a little wide. Not bad though. And you can see uh, Team Lammy already uh, Calling for the uh, the freeze or tap back on one of those blues. So this would be a classic steel setup for uh, for Ryan uh, McNeil Lambswood with the two center guards. So I threw with uh, two rocks out the top four. That's a good position for them. And. Uh, in order for you know McNeil Lambswood to generate any type of steel, those rocks had to be moved around. Yeah. This is light, is it? No, just trying to get it in there uh, to create some type of angle. Like you know, they would have liked to, f you know, freeze that uh, that yellow in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, any, anywhere up there to, as a future play uh, towards those blue stones. Anything up front, I think, is, is works out, Jake. But uh, yeah, I think the freeze was probably the call. So fifth rock uh, coming in here now. So uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, sixth rock, rather. So uh, as expected, you see a play on the, those front stones, again, trying to eliminate any type of uh, cover. And uh, again, trying to keep this end as simple as possible so that uh, Andrew's objective of, of uh, making a score here. Score one to go up three uh, without is, is certainly a desirable uh, situation for the, the Simmons rink. Uh, you know, score two would even be better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Quick aside here, Andrew, uh, our beloved Reg Coggy, former manager of the club, our bartender, uh, and famously known as Briar Beer. Uh, there was a great uh, tribute to him in a, in a, uh, a painting uh, hung in the curling club uh, last week in honor of Reg's contribution to the curling and to the club. Uh, Reg turns 86 tomorrow. Wow. 
Yeah, so we wish him and uh, Diane, his wife, uh, all the best and uh, enjoy your birthday. Rich is, uh, he's looking at uh, relocating actually and uh, moving out of province. Uh, that's a plumbing. And, uh, uh, you know, certainly uh, Reg has been a, a big part of our club and certainly a big part of curling yeah. in general. And uh, the Briar Bears has certainly brought yeah. a lot of smiles to everybody. And, uh, you know, I, you see things retire and see things stop. Uh, and certainly Reg brought a lot to uh, to the enjoyment of that enjoyment side. And the, uh, you know, for the kids and, and all that. And, and, yeah. certainly, and to see that retired as, as Reg retired, I think uh, it's fitting. Yep. And he's made a great contribution to curling in, in uh the Maritimes as well. I mean, he was a major player in the Dartmouth Curling Club for years before he moved to Newfoundland. And uh, quite a legacy. So anyway, wish you all the best in your, your birthday, Reg. Uh, Reg, uh, you know, uh, keeping himself busy. He likes to be busy. I know he's an employee of McDonald's as well. And, yeah, doesn't stop. Uh, no, he, uh, you'll, you'll see his uh, Reg up at the Torbay Road location. And I, I think he's looking at the, a, a transfer, actually. He wants to uh, continue work and... Uh, uh, looking at maybe doing that when he, he uh, goes to the mainland. So we're seeing uh, McNeil Lanswood certainly clogging up the middle here, um, you know, creating as much traffic as possible. Um, you know, at some point, obviously, uh, he's got to make a, a play on those two blues that are in the top four. Uh, but, you know, trying to set up everything he can in order to try and generate some type of a, a steal here to, to get within one for the final end. Update on, the, on sheet two with the ladies. Uh, Stacy Curtis just had a short run back for probably three or four, and it just overcurled, and another steal of one for Sarah Boland. So that game is tied up coming home. And uh, Curtis uh, has last rock. Yeah, tie 4-4. Four, four. Uh, so mm. things are really heating up yeah. on that sheet over there. And again, as we talked about the, the later ends of momentum shift. So we had a, a score of one, a steal of one, and another steal of one uh, yeah. in the ninth end. So yeah. uh, when you look at it uh, with momentum, uh, a lot of pressure now, certainly on uh, Team Curtis, uh, to try and pull this one out of the hat and then, yeah. uh, keep the wind after being, you know, they had a lead of three. Right? Yeah. So a little bump up here, I guess. Is that the plan? Yeah, I would say you did, bump. they'd probably want to see some movement. It's time now, I think, to, to move those blues around. Yeah. So that overcurled a bit. See Andrew looking at the uh, maybe making a play on the yellow and roll in. Probably the right call. Bit testy to be running the guards there now. Yes, and uh, having that rock placement is probably a little deeper than, than what they'd like, uh, but it does give them a couple of options now, uh, that being McNeil Lambswood. Uh, mm. They can certainly run themselves, run those yellows into the blues to create some uh, action on those blue stones. Yeah. And again, I, I wouldn't pick a high weight uh, shot. Again, you just want to, uh, you know, Promote it in there, move those blues around, and, and try and create uh, something for the later shots. I think for Andrew, we just hit this and roll away. Is that possible? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you really want to group them. No. Because uh, it certainly would uh, play into, uh, you know, advantage for me. McNeil Lambs were there. So I agree. I think a hit and roll away would be desired. Roll out even would be fine.
So nose hit here. Yeah, not, uh, I don't think he wanted to stay there, but. So a little bit of a pocket created, but again, the pocket is uh, top T. Yeah. Would you just play off that now with a hit and try to nudge everything off the button? Make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, because with those staggered yellow guards, they're not in a great position for, uh, for usability right now for yeah. McNeil Lanswood. So I, I'm even wondering if you just kind of move those around a little bit. Um, but certainly they, they do have to get those blue rocks moving if they want to have any, any chance of a steal here. So they're certainly motioning uh, to, to do something uh, with those blue rocks. So uh, it looked as though they, they might be playing the top yellows. No, nope, they're going to go right in. And uh, Yeah, I think they're coming in off that outer, outer yeah. blue. Try and kick, uh, you know, eliminate that the blue stone there at the uh, 10 o'clock position and, and probably uh, move that other one back a bit to create some type of jam opportunity later on. Mm. This rock looks works to hard. be a bit tight. Just. Oh, whoa, just, just by. Speed. What a shot. <laughs> so now, what a great outcome. You've got uh, the yellow rock now with blue backing, and uh, you, you touched that yellow rock, and that's no. not going anywhere, no. and the blue is gone. So, Verandu, do you guard it or hit it? Boy, you know what? I, I like guarding it. Uh, you've got, you know... Like I said, you, you, all you need to do here for your team Simmons is score one, mm. and uh, you know you're two. I think you're two shots away from doing anything with that blue stone. So if you you put a a, a blue guard up there, uh, I think you guard your way out of this now. So time out here. Dave Naftal is coming out to give the guys a bit of Naftal wisdom. A bit of Naftal wisdom. Dave, their fifth player coach. Yeah. So Dave as well, you know, a lot of years of curling. Uh, he's been at the uh, the Briar uh, uh, several times, and uh, former Brad Guju alumni. Form, yeah, former uh, player Brad Guju, and actually, uh, he also played with uh, Team Simmons uh, for a couple of years as well. So there's two shots here, really, that uh, they were hoping to take away from McNeil Lanswood, uh, and that's the uh, the run of the yellows. Because uh, you you play those yellows, you make any contact with that yellow that's in top, top of the blue. As I said, the blue is gone. So really, uh, for Andrew, it's a decision now of, of what shot he wants to leave for Mc, McNeil Lanswood. I'm not sure you can cover them all off. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other shot, uh, there's about half of the yellow uh, that's sitting on top of the blue is showing. Uh, so that would be the easier of the two shots, I think. So uh, uh, if I was Andrew, I'd be, I'd be protecting the outside of that, uh, that yellow run or the yellow um, half yellow shot. You know what I'm saying, uh, Jake, yeah. there? Yeah. You can see Alex saying, okay, we go, we'll go guard here, we go guard there. Yeah, I think corner, certainly corner frozen on yeah. that, uh, the top, the blue that's, uh, the sorry, the yellow that's in the uh, 12 foot. Uh, put a little angle freeze on that one. Uh, that would be actually a, a pretty good outcome. Probably would be the best so coming, shot call to to kind of take so if, he, if you can take everything out. Drop this short of the house. Is that I think so. Plan? I think or it's to kind of put a little bit of an angle uh, freeze on that yellow stone that's in the in the twelve foot. In the twelve, yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. To come right in and just yeah. So, so you're blocking both the raise and uh, and the clearing shot up front. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 
and really like if it's not frozen it can sit anywhere as long as it kind of takes that uh mm. takes that uh angle or that that run attempt and uh block off the the path to that yellow stone in the uh in the forefoot so we've got a heavy sweep here by the front end So well, certainly a lot shorter than he planned. Yeah. It's shorter than he planned. I don't. It doesn't cover off uh, the yellow yellow run. Uh, no. So that shot is there available for McNeil Lambswood right now. So if this shot is made, it will leave McNeil Lambswood with um, sitting two and uh, with coverage. So a uh, big shot here uh, for McNeil Lambswood to uh, to certainly uh, try and get a steal of one, if not two, and uh, really put the pressure on the Simmons rink. Yeah, because he'll if he plays this right, then this his shooter is probably going to roll a little bit to. Um, to the right on your screen, and that's going to block the draw. I think he even even knows this, uh, Jake. Yeah, and uh, you know, leave his shooter right there on uh, touching the the the, uh, the center line. So we got a heavy carve here. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's an unf unfortunate outcome there for McNeil Lambswood. He yeah. uh, he definitely got that one a, a little bit on the outside. Uh, sweepers tried to carve that in, but that uh, just peel away. Missed uh, it early, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see Simmons now guard up uh, for him to uh, uh, protect that I rock. Know, I that's... think he's just drawn for two. This is draw for oh, two. Oh, final now. shot. Yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So a draw for two and, and likely the game. Yeah, I would think that that would be uh, handshakes for sure. The rock is off. We got the sweepers keeping the uh, keeping the ice clean. Off and on, so the weight is absolutely Certain should be very it's close. All, it's, it's all about weight. Split the T line again. Off and on, so I think uh, the sweepers like it. Mm, touch heavy, eh, Jake? No, oh, he's heavy. Yeah. So single point. So Simmons is uh, six. And Team Lammy is three, so up three coming on without Hammer. Yeah, so now it's, uh, you know, they're going to try and run him out of rocks. So uh, I, I wonder, will you see the throw through here? Because that, that's one thing we debated with the uh, five guard uh, or five oh, yeah. rock uh, free guard zone. I like it. Yeah, with, with a, a lead of three. Yeah. So I think this is what's uh, indicated by uh, Andrew here. He just wants uh, a rock thrown through. So, uh, again, it's... Uh, not anything in play. No, I don't know. It looks like no. We're gonna. We've got a, a uh, in the house uh, draw coming. So the hey. debate, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no you, argument. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. I mean, uh, and we we've talked about this myself and and uh, teammates uh, uh, Ken Pettigrew uh, of of the best way to uh, uh, approach that end is uh, you know do you come to the house do you throw it through. And I think this rock has come up short for Team yeah. Simmons. I That's don't think good. that would have been the uh, the uh, hoped outcome. Yeah. Not sure uh, the logic there. They're all... And it, you know what? <laughs> it, all it, question it, themselves. It yeah. could be the late ends ice <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, J yeah. Jake with, you know, the slide path starting to get fudgy. Uh, certainly the weight is, is going to come down in the rocks. Um, so you got to throw it a little harder to get it to the rings. So I think you're probably going to see the peel of shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the yeah. call. Yeah. Yeah. At this point they were saying, yeah, why don't we throw that through? Yeah. <laughs> so off and on looks like a good line on this uh, takeout attempt. And 
I saw. Peel made, yeah. So Peel of Shame is, has been made. He gets a, he gets shame. a five out of five, or sorry, a four out of four on that one. Uh. <laughs> so really, Jake, same as you said, same outcome as if you just uh, threw your two rocks uh, through. And uh, again, you know, being up three, I, I would argue that that's not a, a, a bad uh, call. Oh, yeah, definitely. So going for the double corner guard, I guess. Yeah, and again, uh, some teams would elect to go, you know, opposite sides, have corner guards and opposite sides of the ice. Um, again, rock placements is key, uh, that you don't want to set up any type of easy double. Uh, so stacking your guards, again, uh, gives a good opportunity, uh, makes the shot uh, difficultly that much higher for Team Simmons if they want to try and double them off at some point. Yep, nice shot. And it leaves them the best opportunity for the shooter uh, that, that's thrown, if that attempt is made, that it would stick around and not, uh, not come completely out of play. So we just got another throw through, uh, again, just, uh, keeping things simple and, uh, not, uh, I guess leaving any type of risk uh, there for team Simmons so they can protect their lead of three. So Jake, do we have a final over on, uh, that was really close. Stacy Curtis had to play a lightweight hit. There was a rock edge on edge on the button, and she made it, and it rolled, and just stuck around for the win. So Curtis so, gets one in the 10th to advance to the final against Godson this afternoon. Wow, that was uh, a heck of that a shot for, uh, yeah, for, <laughs> you know, that, that shot, see there, you're, yeah. you're still uh, competing for it or you're, you're gone, you're, you're pack, you're packing up and going home. So Andrew, her, her shooter rolled to the eight foot. And I think she stopped probably two inches. Wow. Shot rock. Yeah. So not a measure. It was, no. uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Great shot made by, uh, by Stacy. Yeah. So tough loss, obviously, for Team Boland. Uh, they, you know, they, they pull out all the stops in that mm. game to try and uh, uh, stay in the tournament. And, uh, you know, unfortunate for them uh, that, uh, you know, uh, things didn't uh, go their way today. But uh, again, great shot making and uh, determination really by Team Curtis to, uh, uh, to uh, keep that game uh, yeah. in, in, you know, for, for the W for sure. Back on our sheet, it looks like uh, that uh, peel attempt must have grabbed something because uh, the guys thought it was uh, it was made and it just curled at the very last moment and ended up plugging the guard. Now there's a center guard for uh, McNeil. So we got uh, them utilizing their double uh, double guard here in the uh, the corner guards. So they're going to try and get this one buried. Seems to be hanging a little bit, Jake. Yeah. No big finish there to the uh, to the wings. No, so this will be a straight takeout uh, by Team Simmons, and I guess the pro side miss here is uh, you know either you you take that that rock out or you you take out one of those guards. So uh, either which way, we'll see some movement of of some yellow granite. So sweep call to keep this rock straight. And a roll towards the middle. Nice shot. Yep, not a big roll, but a uh, roll nonetheless. So for McNeil Lambswood here, Jake, that that's a you know where that rock is placed, uh, making the hit and roll is a challenging shot because uh, in order to get fully buried, uh, you're gonna just be nibbling rings. Yeah, so he's going around, going around the double corner. It's got this a curl. rocks looks a little heavy. So heavy sweep by Andrew. And it looks as though that rock 
Uh, might around, be it? it might be nibbling. Yeah. Yep. So this is interesting because you've got a rock now that's uh, back house. Um, you know, if I was Andrew, I think I don't want to stick around. I just want to, you know, peel this one out of there and not leave the blue because uh, being back T could uh, play in, in favor of uh, Team McNeil Amswood. So, yeah, Colin Thomas can see a, a portion of that. Not a, not a lot of it, but he can he can he can see some. And it is long. It's a long guard, so uh, should be able to get a piece of this. So we got an early sweep here by Alex Smith. Trying to keep that rock straight. And got to buy the two yellows. And we got to hit and roll out. Shot made. All right. So Lambswood, uh, Team Lammy is down three. And there's three dot rocks left to play. So Jake, I wonder here if if you actually make a play on that top blue, just tap it back back T, and uh, hopefully get your sh your yellow shooter to bury under that blue guard. Yeah. And what would no, your I thoughts like, be? I on like that? the draw. I, okay. I, I do. I think uh, they just need to bury this thing. So weight certainly looks better on this on this throw. It's not through. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> through. Sure. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's going to bury though. I'm going to work it. No. So there you have it. You got a hit now for the win. I think that rock is wide open. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can, you can play into your blue. You can uh, play direct onto the yellow. Um, there's a number of ways to make this shot and make this yellow go away. So. Although Andrew's gotten quite good with the the softer uh, weight takeouts, uh, he still loves the high heat. So uh, you'll see him throw pretty firm at this rock. So for the win and a berth in the final against Greg Smith this afternoon. And uh, you know what? Quite the, a finish for Team Simmons absolutely. if they can make this rock. Absolutely. A number of times this week, uh, Team Simmons has had their back to the wall. We've got a hard call on sweep. And that yellow is eliminated wow. and the win for Team Simmons. So congrats to Team Simmons and crew as they make their way to the uh, final this afternoon, 2.30, against uh, uh, Team Smith. And uh, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, they've had a number of battles over yeah. the last few years. And uh, I know in the round robin, uh, Team Simmons edged Team Smith um, by a, well, I know Team Smith was actually up four after the break. Yeah. And uh, Andrew back, and crew, huh? yeah, they uh, they inched their way back into the game and, and uh, uh, got the better of Team Smith on that particular day. So uh, going to be an exciting finish this afternoon, folks. No, indeed. So uh, thanks for viewing. Uh, Jake, it's been a pleasure today. Uh, first time you and I have been on the yeah, mic together. And wonderful. a very uh, enjoyable morning for sure. And uh, looking forward to a very exciting finish to uh, uh, today's curling action. Uh, we've got as we've mentioned, we've got Team Curtis playing uh, Team uh, Goslin in the women's final and we've got uh, Team Simmons playing Team Smith at 2.30. So folks if you got no plans this afternoon make your way to the club and if you got plans, we'll tune in online through your mobile device at home, whatever works for you. So again, thanks for viewing and uh, we will be seeing you later on. Have a good day, everybody.